And we'll get it going. All right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi. Script for the remotely conducted open meetings yet again. Here we go. As a preliminary matter, this is Ray Pohl, chairman of the Nantucket Historic District Commission. Permit me to confirm that all the members and persons anticipated on this agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name. Hey, do we have Abby yet, by the way? No, but I'll text her. Okay, just curious. Um, all right. Uh, members, when I call your names, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Val Oliver. Here. Thank you. Diane Coombs. Hi. Thank you, Diane. Here. Jesse Dutra. Here. Thank you, Jesse. Stephen Welch. Here. Thank you. And for the record, this is Ray Pohl. I'm here. Uh, staff members, when I call your names, please respond in the affirmative. Kadeem McCarthy. Here. Thank you, sir. And Holly Bacchus. Present. Thank you very much, Holly. Um, the attend anticipated speakers on this agenda will, will be uh, noted into the record when we get to their particular items on the agenda. Abby's coming. She's just having a little bit of a kerfuffle. Okay. Yeah. No, no problem. But uh, so let me get through this boilerplate stuff here. So good afternoon, everyone. This is an open meeting of the Nantucket Historic District Commission. It's being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order dated March 12, 2020. Due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of COVID-19. In order to mitigate the transmission of COVID-19, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure per public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. For this meeting, the Nantucket Historic District Commission is convening via video conference by Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast might be captured by the recording and that's very dangerous. Uh, all supporting materials that have been provided to members of this body are avail all, also available on the town's website unless noted otherwise. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. So we're now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. And further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking, and please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor and state your name before speaking. And if members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Uh, finally, tonight each vote will be taken via roll call. I think we're all very familiar with that at this point. So that is our COVID-19 rules. Now uh, for the first item on the agenda, I would, I would like, unless Kadeem, you have anything that you need to amend, I would like to have a motion from one of our board members to approve tonight's agenda. Kadeem, so are we okay Mr. with the agendas? Sorry? I, I was saying so move, Mr. Chair. Uh, sounds good to me, and I haven't heard from Kadeem, so I'm going to assume that it's fine. Uh, 
Okay, thank you, Val. Diane. That's on the motion. Aye. Thank you. Jesse Dutra. Yeah. Aye. Thank you, Jesse. Stephen. Aye. Thank you, Val. Your motion. Aye. Thank you. And chairs in favor, motion carries. Uh, Kadeem, do we have anything lined up via email in public comment at this time? Uh, we do not. My mic was uh, freaking out there for a second, but I'm oh, No problem. Um, all right, so then we're going to move along to the consent agenda, which is quite short. Three items I don't believe any of us needs to recuse unless there's something in there that I don't know about. Um, so can I have a motion to approve that from somebody? So move, so Mr. Chair. So move. Um, Diane, Val beat you to this one, so I'm going to go with hers. So Val has made a motion to approve this very short consent agenda. Diane? Aye. Thank you, Diane. Uh, Jesse? Aye. Thank you, Jesse. Stephen? Aye. Very good. Val? Aye. All right, and chairs in favor, motion carries. Consent agenda is done. Now we have a few consent with conditions. So let's see. Any recusals doesn't look that way. So uh, again, could I have a motion? Uh, motion to motion to approve. Thank you, Diane. Okay, so we have a motion from Diane to approve tonight's consent with conditions. Val. Aye. Thank you, Jesse. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Diane. Aye. Thank you, chairs in favor, motion carries. Okay, now this ratification on a motion, that's <coughs> mine, of course, so I need to recuse. And Diane, could you simply act as a chair on that? Yes. Are we skipping uh, signs? Yes. Uh, oh, I don't have signs on mine there, Val. Okay. I might be looking at one that got amended. I think I'm looking at the at the the most recent one. I just printed it. It was okay. Well, you may be looking at Thursday's agenda. We don't have signs on tonight's. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. I need to recuse on this one as well, Ray. <clears throat> uh, you mean the ratification thing? Yep. Well, there is an acting board, so it's Diane is the acting chair, Abby and Stephen. Ah, unless we have. Oh, there is Abby. Okay. Um. So I'm going to step back, Diane. Would you mind uh, chairing this? Oh, is is Lisa here? Yeah, she's is in the Lisa queue. I see her up there. She needs to unmute, though. You got to unmute, girl. I, I'm here. I, I didn't know I had to speak since it was just a ratification of something that was oh. discussed last week. But I'm here. It's <laughs> nice to have you here. Even Thank you. you don't have to. Nice to see you. <laughs> I, well, I have to be uh, here soon, so. Uh, do we have any feeling about move on cottage from 61, the boulevard to 62? Right, That's this was the place. application that came onto the agenda pretty late last week because the staff, um, yeah. miss, I don't know what happened to it, but the, anyway, so I, I think we reviewed it. It was a building moving off of 61, um, and then we looked at a site plan during the meeting that I had emailed. Um, it's, it's, yeah. And it was in red. I don't know. I just want to make sure Holly and um, uh, Kathy have the right site plan. It's a, different than the one that was first um, submitted. Yes. So the building is basically coming over and rotating. So, uh, the front door will face the street. That's right. That's the correct one. That's it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. The this garage is has already been approved to be moved. It was just the house. All right. So let me start with Steve. I think he is on it. Yeah, uh, we're just ratifying. Do you want a motion, Madam Chair? Yes. So I'll make a motion to ratify the vote. Okay. Is Abby here yet? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, yeah, uh, I. Okay. Would you? I'm in favor. Good. And I am. You're in favor of. Yes. Steve made the motion of ratifying it. He said I. You're saying I. 
and I'm saying all right. So it is passed that the, the place will be moved Thank from you. 61. Okay. Okay. Please. And the next one. Are we doing 121 Madigan Road now, or do you want it? I thought you held it because you want. Well, we didn't a full have a full board. board last time, but now we do have a full board. We are we are missing um, Jesse, so we only had four members last time, I believe. But now I think we have everybody. Okay. So, what would you like us to? So this is an application um, that you guys reviewed a while back. Um, it's a house at 120, the corner of Manicot Road and Cliff Road. It is uh, a gambrel and has natural trim. Uh, we had requested some revisions as well as a roof walk. Um, and now, so this is just a submission. Uh, and then we withdrew it uh, mainly because we, I think we lost a board member. I believe that's right. T TJ used to sit on this and he's no longer there. Right. Anyway, so I, I just love to go through the drawings and tell you what we changed. Um, these are not from what we had submitted at the previous application that, you know, before we had to pull in a resubmit because of the change of board members. But I'll just, some, I'll just propose it um, based on what was previously approved because I think that's probably just as easy. Um, so you'll see on the south elevation, we have uh, changed the railing to include more shingle. And we've actually shingled the railing on the far right and reduced the door to one door rather than a pair of French doors. That's on the south. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then on the east, we have changed the ballast again to shingle. Um, we've changed the window in the gable. We've re relocated, a, we've removed a door and added a window and then we've actually removed another window. The north elevation, which is the one that you see at a far distance from the cliff. We have uh, made some fenestration changes to the far left, removed fenestration. We added a railing <clears throat> across. It's basically just a four foot wide uh, deck connector that allows you to get onto that deck um, if you had to um, via a wheelchair, but we ended up shingling that entire deck so that it just blends into the rest of that gambrel end. And then you'll see we added some shingles up in the second floor um, um, balustrades to try to reduce the amount of uh, balusters that we're showing. And we you know, changed a door to a window um, on that elevation as well. And again, more for the West, basically some railing changes and some minor fenestration changes. Um, we submitted, we also, so as well as on this application, you'll see that uh, we have resubmitted for the roof walk. Um, I did want to point out that we have, the client has already purchased a bunch of Leland cypresses to go in the south east corner of the property where I believe Abby has suggested doing some screening there. And it's noted on our site plan, there's gonna be a, a berm and some vegetated screening to help mitigate the, the height of the building from that direction. So it's gonna be right in that bottom corner, bottom right corner. Um, and so you'll see that obviously we're asking for the roof walk again. Uh, the chimneys have already been approved. They are mocked up or built or mocked up, either way you wanna look at it on the building as they are, um, as, as is the roof walk. And one of the suggestions that came up prior to having to pull the, the um, application was the idea of lowering the roof walk as much as we could into the roof. So we lowered it another eight inches. <clears throat> Let me um, just turn my phone down. And we're, and somebody has suggested a shingled skirt. So the skirt is now just about 15 inches in height. You can see on those photos, they've, they haven't put in the additional shingle courses, but that's basically one shingle high, which is about 15 inches. And um, it's all natural to weather. The skirt blends right into the roof. 
Um, we think that with the uh, chimneys that are already there, that this, that the roof walk doesn't really, you know, change the height of the structure dramatically. It, it fits in, and I, I believe I submitted a bunch of other pictures from other vantage points, and Steve might have re-emailed them uh, later the, later this afternoon to you guys, just showing the impact from the different rows. or some from the cliff. I think these are just roof walks in the area, and that we can look at, but. Brett. Okay. Um, there's these other uh, pictures that hold uh, uh, the different oh, band points of the, um, from the, let's see. Did you send those, Steve? He did. Oh, there they are. You know, so again, I mean, what you really see from the distance is, yeah, yes, it's a, it's a sizable house up there, but the chimneys are there. I think the roof walk is really just going to blend in part of the roof. It's all natural to weather. There's no paint. Um, it will not really highlight on the horizon any more than those chimneys already do, which are already approved. Um, and I think there's a few pictures from there. There's a few pictures from... Uh, <clears throat> sorry, Diane, were you going to ask me a question? No, I see from the picture that I have up on the screen right now, which is the house in the, in the distance mm -hmm. over the pond. Mm -hmm. uh, it is humongous. It, it, it troughs everything else around. I just am saying I people can vote what they want. But also what I want to make clear, I've looked it up in every different way, is this house is on or the driveway, it is classified at, as 121 Madigate Road. It is not Cliff Road. It is much closer to Madigate Road than it is to Cliff. So I don't think that the picture showing what's on Cliff really well, no, has the point when it is I, mean, I, pardon? Also, I also submitted pictures from Madikit Road I just don't think she's gone to them yet and it is a big house I'm not I'm not disputing that but I do think that okay. the roof walk on the roof isn't really increasing the mass of the house but um and there are other pictures from Madikit Road where you'll see it's particularly coming from town to the house and with this addition of the berm, it's going to be, um, it's already pretty, uh, uh, you know, uh, camouflaged, but the addition of the berm is going to make it much better. Holly, if you can't find them, I can pull them up. Where, where is the berm? Where's the berm? Uh, if you go back to the site plan, it's listed on the where? site plan. <clears throat> It's in this, the bottom, the southeast corner. So as you come up Madikit Road, there's going to be a high point here that is going to be vegetated. He's purchased 20 Leland cypresses. And that's vegetated. How big is it? What's, what is the size of it? Does it go, it drops down from 49 All down to top of 44. Yeah. Well, if, if he, What's if he, the if distance? He, how long is it going? Well, if he makes a berm at elevation 50, you know, and then uh, all the way down to where 47 is right now, and then plants Leland cypresses on top of that, that will grow. Um, you know, it'll make a substantial impact in terms of the visibility from that direction. Have I we, if you look at have the, you checked? <clears throat> Look at, at the what? The photos that I submitted from Attica Road, and I'm happy to pull them up if, if Holly doesn't have them. I, I don't think we've seen them. I haven't seen them. Yeah. Hold My on. thought is, though, Lisa, while getting pulled, is do we have some sort of specification of how long, how big a berm can be? 
Uh, let's see. Hold on. Let me just, did, did you find them, Holly? Um, or do you yes, I'm just them? pulling them up. Okay, great. Um, you know, I don't have that printed out, but it's going to be, I think, pretty, uh, you know, when you say how long it can be, I'm not sure what you mean. I think she's well, most places who have a broom around the road. They... Yeah, it, the berm is on Madigan Road. My thought was most places we have <laughs> kept the size of a berm that people have planted on, like out on on uh, different houses that needed it for the for the sewer things and everything else. They have not extended quite as long as as this berm looks as if it'll be. It's going to go from 50 feet down to 44 feet. Well, no, that's the existing um, vegetation. I mean, that's the existing topography, Diane, the 50 to 44. That's how yeah. the topo is now. I don't think we're suggesting filling 50 feet up to the road, up to the setback. I think we're just suggesting creating an area up there, maybe down to the elevation 47, where you mound up that part a little bit and you know, okay. maybe raise it to 52 and you can plant some trees there, which will really help with the um, visibility. Yeah, okay. I just um, wanted to make sure that we- Yeah, so if I- In if our confines. Oh. Holly, I found the, um, pictures if you want a screen share. I can just show because these are all from Atticut Road and they kind of show that corner. Yeah, I, I got them now. I'm sorry, they were. Okay. So bear with me. There's two sets and there's another set from, um, I think the Matica Road ones are the more important ones. Uh, I don't know when these were sent, but. That's the, that's the cliff one. Okay. I'll let you share. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> okay. So here you go. This is, well, let me start to with the other ones. Cause I know that these are coming from town to up to the house on the right. And so this is the, you know, this is the area that would be more filled I mean, already, I think the house is pretty well buffered by vegetation, um, but, you know, we could fill, you know, quite a bit more in this, in this zone right here. Um, Lisa, just to piggyback that, that um, vegetation there is maybe eight to 10 feet lower yes. than the berm would be planted. Excuse me. <clears throat> who, is, who is speaking, please? Yeah, sorry, Madam Chair, it's uh, Stephen Cohen. Who is I just, speaking? It, Madam Chair, it's Stephen Cohen. I'm, That's, I, if you want to speak, just let us know. Sure, I, I, I apologize for that. I just Before wanted to provide slightly more information for Lisa, from what Lisa was saying about the firm that the vegetation that's there is about eight to 10 feet lower than where the firm would be planted. So the screening provided by the uh, trees would be you know, even more significant than what you see from this picture. Yeah. And then this is from the bike path looking in the same spot. And then I believe this one is coming. I'm not sure if that one's coming from the other direction. I'm trying to remember where this one was taken from. Must be. You know, headed to, uh, This back is in going to, to. To town. This is going to Madigan because that's going to be on the, got to be on the right hand side. Yeah, so this is coming from Madikit in town so that the house is on the left. The house would be on the right. Oh, you're coming you're into town, the house yeah. would be on the left. Yes. Going so out in town, it will be on the right. That's right. So this is coming into town from Madikit. Hmm. So we, 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 you know, uh, and I think Siegel wants to speak, but we, um, we thought that, you know, mocking up or building the plywood boxes, the chimneys that were um, already previously approved helped the case with the roof walk. And 
actually uh, setting the roof off platform down to the roof and sort of having that mocked up also helped. Um, and I think I will stop there and let Stephen take over. Uh, Madam Chair, if it's okay. Uh, I just want to um, follow uh, up on what Lisa was saying about the, the roof walk. I, I think are you, that- are you rep Stephen? Yes, Diane. Stephen, are you representing R21? Cor Madigan correct, Road? yeah, I'm, I'm with the applicant with Lisa. Yes? Yes. Okay. 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 So, yep. You know, I, I think that we have, um, in prior discussions of this, been, been slightly distracted by the size of the house. Now, it's true that it's a large house. No one disputes that. It's true that the house is, at, you know, in a high point of the lot. No one disputes that. And, it, and it's true, you know, especially with the white, you know, Tyvek, it looks even more, and the yellow cedar, it looks even more, it stands up more now than it would. Um, and it's true that it's in a, a more rural and less uh, downtown area of the island. So I don't think anyone disputes that. Um, but what I think is really important is when we're talking about whether or not it should have a roof walk, that it's important to consider that building with Nantucket in mind actually states two important things. One is that roof walks were prolific on Nantucket uh, at one point and were on nearly every structure and that the houses that maintain them were essentially the houses of wealthy people because they became uh, difficult to uh, maintain and it was people of, who had lesser means who, who let them go into disrepair. Uh, so it would be more typical for a house that was uh, a larger house to have it. Secondly, roof walks historically were not for watching the boats come in, they were for fighting fires, which I know, you know most of you know. Um, and so you would typically have them on large homes with chimneys where people would need to get up there to do firefighting. Um, and in fact, uh, the HTC guidelines themselves provide that roof walks are um, almost always only appropriate on two-story structures. And in fact, uh, an application for a roof walk on a short building is antithetical to those guidelines. That doesn't mean it can't be approved. There are some areas of the island where having a roof walk might make sense on a lower structure, like in Grand Point. Um, but for most of the islands, it's appropriate for the, you know, for the board to only approve for walks, and it's the, it's the guidelines in HTC building with Nantucket in mind, and also the, the board's practice to only approve roof walks on two-story structures. So it's a little funny to hear me say, well, we don't want a roof walk on this building because it's a big two-story structure, when in fact, that's exactly the kind of structure that historically would have a roof walk. Um, so, I, I want to note that, you know, Nantucket is very lucky in, in, in one way that the HTC's guidelines and Nantucket's architectural history and good design and good aesthetics tend to line up pretty well. And in fact, you know, we are, we've been protected from a lot of bad design because historic design is also usually good uh, design. However, there are a few exceptions. Um, that are historically appropriate for Nantucket, but are not necessarily how people would want it done today because it's less organic and, and stands out more. And, and, and I'll give you a really good example. So for example, all along the harbor in Monomoy, um, nearly every single house has white trim and uh, white painted roof walks and things like that. And it makes those houses stand out very significantly. Um, I think under most guidelines today, and I know I've, I've had this discussion with the board a number of times over the years, um, most people would rather see no white paint in a location like that so that the house is blended into the, um, into the uh, uh, dunes and, and the beach and the vegetation in that, in that kind of a location. However, um, the white paint on Nantucket was actually historically done as a for two reasons. One, it was a symbol of wealth, and two, it was a sign of religious purity, um, which is something that it says in Nantucket, with my, in building with Nantucket in mind. That's not, not my observation. Um, so, you know, there is precedent on, on, precedent, um, on Nantucket for uh, design that actually causes the building to stick out a little bit or to be more visible to be, the, to be historically appropriate. But aside from that, I think if you just look at the pictures that, that uh, Lisa submitted, just driving around this rural neighborhood for 15 minutes, we were able to photograph 11 roof walks. And I think what that shows is that there are plenty of roof walks in this area and none of them are 
they're all in large houses. They're all, you know, peaking up, you know, and, and in fact, most of them are white. Uh, we were able to find a few that were um, natural to weather, but most of them were white. Um, Excuse so, me, Steve. Steve, yeah. may I interrupt? Sure, Thank sure. You. How many, how many of those houses that had roof walks are on the Madigan Road? Um, well, they're all within this area. I think that. No, I'm some... not asking you that. I'm saying this house faces and is part of the Madigan Road, and should therefore fit in with the Madigan Road creation. And sure. I'd like to know of, of those roof walks that you pointed out, how many are on face the Madigan Road? Well, I think a number of them are visible for Madigan Road. They're on Eel Point Road. They're on Dionis. They're on uh, all those little side streets that come off of Madigan Road and Eel Point Road and Cliff Road. Uh, I don't know if any of them are actually on. Uh, I didn't take the pictures, Lisa. I don't know if you know the answer to that. I, I, I don't. Uh, I mean, I, I, uh, I didn't take the pictures either. Um, but I do think that a lot of them are, again, accessible either in that area. I don't know if they're literally on the Matica Road, but they could be where that um, Maxie's Pond Road is, like in that area and that subdivision that mm -hmm. is really accessed off of Matica Road. That's where I think. Oh, you know you don't really know where they are. There's a picture that you show here saying Dionys. Yeah, yeah that's in Dionys. But, that's me but I, 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 think the, I think the point that, that, Diane, I appreciate your your question, but I think the point we're trying to make is that with if you get outside of the cliff town uh, vernacular and you get into the uh, sort of the next ring, which is a more rural uh, ring, that you still see a proliferation of large homes with roof walks on them, um, consistent with what's being proposed here. Right. So, you know, that said, I think that it is, it's, it's highly historically appropriate to have a roof walk on this house, even though it's a large house. And in fact, frankly, because it's a large house, um, but that All I right. think that this roof walk we'll is done. Now. Okay. Okay. And this roof walk is, um, is, is, is done in a very uh, um, accepting way because we have reduced the skirt from, you know, most of these skirts you can see they're three feet, four feet, five feet. Our skirt is only 15 inches and it's natural to weather shingles um, with natural to weather uh, balusters. It should essentially disappear once it frays out, which would be in a year or two. Um, so, okay. Thank you. We will. Thank, thank you. Proceed now, starting uh, with Diane. I'm going to pop if I don't say something soon. Yeah. Yeah. I was just coming to you, sweetheart. Hold on. <laughs> you may speak now. Thank you, um, Abby. So, um, Diane's point about it being on Madigan Road, um, which it really, it really is, um, is is a really good point because. You know, you have Sanford Farm on one side that has completely natural. I mean, that's the way we should be compromising. I realize it's a big house, but putting a roof walk on the highest point of, of this area is, 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 is adding to the massing. It absolutely is adding to the massing. Um, I, I wanted to start on a kind note because I think a lot of the uh, changes made were good changes, Lisa. Um, mm -hmm. I appreciated some of those French doors going to windows and putting in balcony, shingling the balconies and really toning it down. Um, but the, um, the things you're saying to make this appropriate, uh, I'm not buying it. Um, it's on a very high point, it's very visible. Um, so I would like to get back to the, um, so I'm against the roof walk on the Madigan side. I, I, I really don't want to see right now. It looks like there is a sort of a, they've piled up, uh, dirt, I guess it is. Uh, it's 
I imagine that's going to be part of the berm, but I don't want to see like Leyland Cypress on top of a berm. That's going to be, look really odd. I would rather see vegetation that like the black pines and some of the natural growth that you see on Madigate Road um, to buffer, to, to, to be the vegetation rather than, you know, throwing in, you know, lines of Leyland Cypress. I think that's highly inappropriate. Um, ask, uh, let's ask Mr. Dutra about that. Um, and then just on the um, cliff side, I'd like to talk about the um, elevations briefly. I can do this really fast so other people can talk. Um, but I like the way the, the balcony got broken up. If we could, Holly, could we bring up the, um, I think it's the north elevation that's on um, Cliff Road more as you're looking across. Yeah, it is north elevation. Um, and, well, while we're bringing that up, um, so I would like the first floor to also have more shingling on the balustrade and the second floor do the same thing that you did um, where you, you combine the two balustrade and shingle. I think that will tone it down a lot. Um, the other uh, architectural changes I, I'm, I'm in favor of, but uh, not, don't tell me the history of Nantucket about roof walks. It's just, it's just crazy. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Jesse, you, are you still here? I am. <clears throat> May I have your opinion? Um, sure, so to Abby's comment about the uh, Leland Cypresses, um, you know, landscape isn't really an HDC purview, but at the same time when it's being uh, used as a screen, I think we have a right to make a comment. Um, and, um, you know, my opinion on Leland Cypress is, um, is that, um, they only work well as a hedge, um, because they get too big and will get knocked down by the wind over time and, uh, are in, in a natural setting anyways, which this seems like it is, um, they're, they, they look contrived. Um, but. Uh, moving on to uh, the, the application for um, the building, I mean, it's a lovely design. Um, you know, there's a lot of great aspects of it and, and a lot of the changes I, I, I like. Um, and I understand uh, Steve's historic comments, but I think um, being, um, you know, each application needs to uh, um, be viewed as um, individually and, and not as a, a as a whole, um, and the way this property <clears throat> in house um, uh, sits on top of uh, uh, of the hill, and and how big it already is, um, it, it it it's hard to ask for more height in in, in massing on something that's so big. Um, as as nice of a design it is, and honestly, you know, looking at the design, it. The, the, the roof walk does have a, a fairly low impact compared to a lot of the pictures that you provided. Um, but anything to add to this uh, massing is a concern, um, as little as it might be. Um, and, you know, the other comment I would make, um, I was living in Madikit all winter long, so I drive by this house uh, twice a day. Um, and now it is much more screened than it is in the winter time. Uh, most of that vegetation is uh, deciduous vegetation and the leaves drop and this, and this house actually sticks out a lot more on, uh, during uh, the winter in, in, in shoulder months when the leaves are down off the trees. So that, that also uh, um, gives me a concern um, that what, you know, the pictures that we're looking at are not, um, you know, what it will look like in the winter. Um, so I appreciate um, 
everything is done, and I and I honestly don't have any other issues with with the changes. I think they're they're very nice and a very nice design. Um, and, and 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 I do think the the roof walk has a low impact, but any impact on such a a big building um, uh, in sitting on such a hill um, um, is concerning. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Steve. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Um, I'm going to take a little bit different position. I went through, I pretty, first of all, I want to acknowledge we received a little while back a detailed, kind of a detailed report on the historic nature of roof walks and their locations and whatnot, um, which I thought was very well done. Uh, I gave it serious consideration and, uh, and then I surveyed the area. And uh, while I don't disagree that roof walks were not originally outside of town, there are many homes all over the island and certainly not near the water with roof walks. Uh, in this general area, I drove around, there's a couple on Maxi Pond, there's a couple on Deacon's Way, there's one on Kapam, I think there's one, you know, there's one on West Cliff over off Kapam before Trotz Hill, there's one on Millbrook off Madiket Road, there's one on the Bartlett Farm extension uh, as you're going out Madiket uh, across from Swift Rock. And then obviously you go into Madiket and there's uh, more than a handful and again, not on the water. So for me, I think with the roof walk, uh, natural finishes, the additional vegetation each help. Uh, I mean, look, the fact is the real issue, here, the real issue here is that it's a house on a hill, um, but it's too late to fix that. And uh, I suggest we keep that in mind. I mean this, not in a pokey way, but we keep it in mind for the future. Uh, the roof walk, I think the skirt, which uh, currently matches the wood roof, will gray with it. And I think that overall, well, the open balustrades will kind of blend into the skyline. Overall, I think that the roof walk actually, it is low impact. I agree with Jesse, but I, where I disagree with some of the comments is I think it will actually help to break up that roof mass. Um, you're driving down Madigan Road, you're not looking at that structure. What you recognize, if you recognize it through the vegetation that's proposed from the Madigan Road is gonna be this kind of large structure, not the bump out on the roof or the uh, balustrade that you can see the sky through. So I would, um, I'm, I, I'm not thrilled with uh, the design, don't get me wrong, I think it's a wonderful design. Um, I wish it were just two feet lower on the plateau in terms of the vertical element. I do, uh, I would vote to approve the roof walk. I would urge you not to use Leyland Cypress. I know it's not our purview, but when landscaping becomes architectural elements because it's so big, there's, there are other indigenous materials. Some have been mentioned, even red cedar, which is really just a juniper uh, with an irrigation system is gonna grow 30 feet tall. So uh, on the other elements of the design, I think from the north elevation, back up a second, I got the drawings here. Uh, I'm okay with the second floor uh, balustrade change with the shingle wall rail uh, and the wall, uh, the railing to the right side, I think is okay. I think if that were broken up with balustrade, it would be too busy. Um, that translates to the east elevation. Uh, no, the north is so far from, from uh, cliff road that you're not going to, I don't think you're going to really be able to tell what the difference is. Um, and then I think the West is similar. So uh, those are my comments, Madam Chair. Thank you. All right. <laughs> my comments, I think the changes in the building fit in well. I cannot approve the roof or I think if we put it down, sink it on the roof, we are creating something that will be copied in order to get a roof walk when they are not always in the right spot. A roof walk on a building does not make it say to the people driving by, there is a rich person who can afford to paint his house white and afford to have a roof walk. When it is the other roof walks, I tried to get where they were. They you mentioned all the way down to Madigan 
town. That's not, this is at the meeting of Eel Point Road, Cliff Road, Madicate Road, the biggest farm walk, Sanford Farm that we have going over into the center part of the island. And I think it has to be defended. I, the, the building is too high. You, Jesse says most of that woods there is deciduous, which means it will be shining in the winter time. The light, <laughs> if they live here in the winter, they'll see it from that and and Eel Point Road. I think that the building should be as quiet as possible. The has to be carefully done and the vegetation plant has to be carefully thought out so that it isn't all deciduous and it isn't all the same stuff that we plunk around anything that needs to be hidden. Yeah, I, I think that they have to be of some. I beg your pardon. I said I agree. I agree with. I the think they have to. Be, okay, and they have to be of a size that they're not saplings, and they're not three inch. Mm -hmm. But they have to be enough to cover what they're covering. You could see that building from going east, west, west, east, and. There isn't a building around. I don't care if you go all the way out to Eel Point. They're all those are all facing the ocean, but this sits on top of one of the highest hills, and it is a building that is too, too large to be there. It is against our built and tuck it in mind, which says do not build on the highest spot. It says that right in the same place where Steve found his stuff. Do not plant on the highest spot. It should be down and tucked in. And uh, the house itself <coughs> is delightful. And everything that we could rail against the, the decks and all the rest of it had been well covered. And I can live with that. It is the roof work that just flares in against what we should be doing, or I feel yeah. we should be doing. Madam so Sir, I have one question. That, um, I don't think the fifth yeah. member spoke. We didn't hear from you Val. Don't no, she's she's recused. I am? No, I'm not. Not. not oh, that. oh, that. I'm sorry, Sudi. <laughs> That's OK. I'm sorry. I didn't want to interrupt, but I just wanted to make sure. And then I would like to say oh. a few things when, you, when she finishes, obviously. but. Obviously, I thought I'd said that it said Ray and and Val. Well, that was, well, that was find the previous um, application. Yeah. That was on 62 Boulevard. Uh, that is 88 Quidnet. I guess. I'm sorry. Please, I'm please sorry. It's okay. They're both. That's fine. I just wanted to let you know that she hadn't spoken yet. Well, thank you very much because I, I would have crashed on with one and nine and forgotten all about five. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Val. Please. Um, I agree with a lot of what's been said. Um, I think the biggest concern is uh, has been mentioned and it's passed. So we need to move on from that. And that's perhaps we should have taken a little bit more closer look at where it was gonna be on the crest of the hill. But it's interesting because listening to everyone, Madiket Road is not, for me, a concern. I feel like the vegetation there is making it more akin to the pictures that were presented to us. It's the Cliff Road side that is not at all like the previously showed um, yeah. roof walks in the area. And I'm just wondering, is there any sort of possibility of mitigating the impact of this, this house that way, like with some sort of vegetation or... Um, we can certainly study that on the cliff. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know if we can get the height, obviously, because it's very high above Cliff Road. Yeah. Um, I also think that, um, you know, we're looking at a house and it's raw stage with the wood that's all new. And right. most of the time when we look at things like that, it, it sort of is like, whoa. Mm -hmm. But after a year or two and it's grayed in and all the vegetation is grown in and things are back to normal, it you just sort of go by and well, it's another house. So um, I like Steve, I, I agree with him on, I don't think that the roof walk is, is more of an impact. I think where we maybe dropped the ball was with the initial um, approval. But with that said, we're only focusing on what we can look at right now. And um, if Lisa's willing to look at doing some more natural vegetation as opposed to the cypress, yeah. Um, I think that would really help because a lot of times that is such an, a, you know, when it gets planted all close together and in a unnatural pattern, it kind of draws your attention there. So if it is mitigated with a lot of natural, maybe native vegetation on the Medicaid side, it would be fine. Um, and I do think the other changes help um, yeah. on, on the north. Thank you. And then I, I, if you're finished, Val, I had a couple I of am. things. I, I appreciate the comments about the vegetation. I agree with you that um, it, it would be better, more naturalized, and the client is completely in favor of all the comments you have suggested. Um, in terms of the, you know, uh, the mitigation of the roof walk itself, I mean, I think, you know, we could, we looked at eliminating the chimneys at one point, which I think add a lot more mass. Um, you know, even more so than the roof walk maybe does. We could look at making the roof walk a little smaller. Um, we think that the changes that we suggested in terms of shingling more of these railings actually deaden down the impact that the house will have because there'll be less balusters. It'll just be a quieter house, which and which is why we think that you know the roof walk is appropriate with this design, and which is why we came back with these changes on the railings. Hey Lisa, I have a question for you. Yeah. What What are the chimneys? Are they parged like white, or uh, could they be just natural brick? Because I think that would help too. Yeah, they could certainly be natural brick, but you know they don't need to be there. In all honesty, we submitted the last time some options of getting rid of the chimneys, making the roof walk smaller, only having one chimney, and I can pull those up if you guys are interested in seeing them can certainly do that. I mean, it does simplify things for sure. I don't know, how does everyone else feel about that? I think the brick, I think that the, actually the part, if it's parge painted sort of a grayish white, I think they're going to go disappear more than a brick. I think okay. a brick is gonna be a strong statement up there on the hill. I agree. Yeah, we're happy to do whatever you would like on chimneys. Um, but I'm happy to, if Shahali wants to share my screen, just show some different options with, now these, these are old. So the roof walk, you'll see the difference between the last submission, um, just to show some different options with, um, so you see how much higher the roof walk was before and it had a real skirt. Um, so you'll see that the latest submission actually introduces a bunch of other revisions, including the, the roof walk. But we looked at making the roof walk a little smaller. We looked at just having one chimney. We looked at a slightly longer roof walk with no, or not longer than what we've submitted, but the longer roof walk with uh, no chimneys and then putting a, the chimney, just one chimney kind of at the very end of the building, um, you know, as a way of, of simplifying the roof line in contrast to so option B, I guess it is, with the one, with the one chimney. Yeah. Uh, is that option B, that it is, I think that this is right, that the two chimneys and the roof walk make the roof very busy. Um, but I think, I don't know, the single, there's nothing up there except the, the roof walk is, what you look at is what you're going to see as you drive along. You're not going to see the first floor and you're not going to see a lot of the second floor. You're going to be looking right at that roof for the most part. 
Um, so uh, I don't know. Madam so, Chair? Yes. Could I just, I wanted to follow up. I, I think if you did, if if we went in the direction of option B, I, I actually, I'm kind of reconsidering a gray parge. Um, I think that brick on that one chimney might, if it's like an old antique brick, it, it is going to be something that stands out um, more fundamentally as structural because it's got the small little pieces. But if it's like a whitewash or something, it may not. Um, or option C, which is to have no roof, uh, no, no chimneys, or even uh, D. Uh, I liked D because it tends to stretch out the perception where the two chimneys, I think it's, no offense, Lisa, but it's kind of really, bam, very symmetrical and right up there. I where actually, I, I, I like, I like D to kind of blends, pulls yeah, your yeah. eye away. I felt D was more historic too, in a way. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's typical to have a, a chimney at a gable end. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Do you think, do, would you like to have a revision so we can see what she comes up with? We have three proposals and they the, should be considered. I think that it's perhaps worth the time because it's a very important building. And if, would the, you commissioners feel more comfortable just seeing a revision and seeing it, or do, do you want to approve it now? Well, um, you want I, I did have some comments on the north side. I don't know if I might have got lost in all the roof walk, but on the north elevation, I, I thought where, where you did a combination of shingling the balcony and the balustrade, especially on the second floor, I thought, and the first floor, I think it looks, um, it fades into the distance better than seeing all the balustrades. Yeah, here we are on the north elevation. First the floor. one that's in the middle on the, I guess it's the first floor. Mm -hmm. It it starts to look like an apartment building if, if, but I think if you bring in the sides, the shingling like you did on the front, it it's a lot, it fades back into the shingles. Well, if you, and, the, and then the second floor, if you could bring those make it even left, less balustrade. I think that's a good direction. Mm. Well, how, would somebody like to make a motion that perhaps for a hold for, for minor revisions and we have one more chance to look at it? Uh, I'll make a motion can I make, for hold for revisions. Uh, can I make one comment on the revisions? Yeah, hi, Jesse. May, may I yes, make one Jesse. comment on revisions? Sorry. Um, I just, um, I, I think it, we could maybe make something work, but I love how you have kept the, the uh, current um, um, roof walk low. So if you could try to keep it low in the, in the new revisions, along yeah, yeah, no, your, yeah. not like what they were in those previous revisions. That's right. Yeah, I only had those because they were the old submission, Jesse, but I think what we're going to do is take the take the same concept with the lowered roof walk and the shingle skirt and show some different alternatives with the chimneys. Um, that would be great. Thank and you. And we're going to add more shingle okay, left deck as well. Um, so we'll continue to soften the architecture more um, and address some of your other comments. Motion to hold for revisions. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Val. I guess I, I think we could just eliminate the chimneys and oh, approve it the way it is, but well, okay, let's do that. Even. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I'm just feeling like we should give, I guess if we're going to do revisions, I would like to suggest that we give a little bit more direction. There's currently four options on the table. When you multiply that out by the chimney finishes, you have eight add the uh, potential complications with the roof or with the balustrades. I mean, we could have 15 options in front of us, so, or more. Uh, if it's possible, I would like to uh, limit the uh, options or the direction of the options. So if we looked at the, if we look at the option A through D for the roof walk with the chimney and just give a general consensus that 
for instance, option A is not approvable um, and maybe one other isn't, so we can, you know, just move it forward uh, just in the interest of time. You know, we're all focused on it right now. Next time it'll be a little simpler. Um, option A for me is, is really not approvable. Uh, I think option B is closer to approvable. I would say either option C or D uh, subject to maybe some additional uh, information on the chimney finish are both acceptable. Um, okay. And I would, I would also just say, I would agree with Abby's comments with respect to the skirting, uh, the sidewall skirting on the railing at the rear. Because I, I think, think the front is where she wanted it. Thank I you, think Madam Okay, I think your information is is absorbed by the the architect. Yes, and they should be able to make that choice. It's it's their building. Uh, let me just say we will defer to you on the chimney finish. I don't think right. that's an important uh, issue for us. Whatever you guys think is going to be the most appropriate, we're we're pretty good with. But we will come back with. Just then, just a couple of options really with the roof walk and addressing some of the other railing concerns. Okay, and and perhaps a, a tree or two. Yeah. In there. So yeah. Okay. What's the letter option that just has the two chimneys, no roof walk, that the way it's submitted? Is that what? That, was, that was what was previously approved. Oh, that's not an option. Well, it doesn't get a letter? No, because that's already approved. Okay, well, that's my favorite. <laughs> well then but then we can leave it we can build it the way it was approved and leave all those balusters you're not going to like that i don't know Do have, i'm confused now. let's get the let's get the the thing done jesse what's your vote uh i i val was an i I am an I, and I believe Steve was an I. As long as we let them know which one, which one we didn't like, and which, so that would leave B, C, and D on tap. Okay. Uh, Correct. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, and also he was concerned about the finish of the chimney. You might come up with a couple of finishes. And then we could choose. Everybody's mentioned what they'd like to see, so I'm sure you can do that with, without having to make specific drawings. Just one old chimney with three different kinds. Okay. So that is a, a complete vote of all of us, and there's a vote for revisions. I thank you very much to all of you for your. I would like to thank all of you patience. for your patience as well. Ah. Uh, so. Yeah. Are we all set on that? We're all set. We're all set on that. The next one okay. is Mr. Ole is back here with I'm 24 back. wood. Correct. Okay. 24 woodbine. So now I just want to check something out because we have three, well, we have four regular members, including myself. And we have Jesse and Steve, and I just want, Jesse, are you there? And uh, Yes, yes, I am. Mr. Chair, though, um, if it would be okay, uh, if I could step out for the rest of new business, I've got a birthday party I have to attend to, but I'll oh. be back for all business. Okay. All right. Well, I was going to, I was going to suggest that we go into the rotation, but if you're not going to be here, then skip that. So we'll see you when we see you, Jesse. Okay. So um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll keep an ear out and be back for all business. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, thank, you. thank you. Okay, well then, then our board is established on the next items. Okay, we we have four regular members and Stephen. So five member board on on unless there's a conflict of some kind. But so let's move along to twenty four Woodbine. Do we have um, uh, Matthew on deck? Matthew Tickern. He's there. He is. He's just <laughs> muted. Okay. Right. Matthew, you may want to unmute. I yeah, I did. Sorry about that. All right, no problem. Um, okay, so we have four applications for twenty-four Woodbine uh, new business. Uh, why don't you, and first is a move-off demo. 
Uh, correct, Mr. Chair. Yeah. So <clears throat> there's a main dwelling and a uh, garage on the property. Right. Uh, the, pl the plan is to move off, demolish both of the structures. Uh, the structure that is up first is the main dwelling. It was built in 2001 and uh, we've advertised for it and we've had some people uh, interested, but uh, we are requesting. <laughs> built in 2001. Yes. Okay. Uh, do we have any pictures or documentation of the building? I believe there, there you go. Okay, all right. Hey, Matt. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, I should have said this earlier on the other, where is this? Uh, it's in Surfside, uh, it's on Woodbine. Surfside. Um, um, so Holly, or if that's, if you're at the, yeah, so can you zoom that in a little bit so I can see what the street names are there? This isn't so much for this application. It's just so that I know where we are for the remaining application. Sure. Uh, Noshon, Woodbine, Pequot. Okay. Yep. All right. Kind of, we, you typically access it from Massaquit, which is uh, off of Surfside. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Massaquit's the main road that runs parallel or perpendicular to Surfside. Correct. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So, folks, we're looking at this building built in 2001. Matthew is requesting a move off slash demo. Any concerns, questions about this application? Not from me. Okay. Thank you. Um, anyone else? I just hope that somebody wants to take something. Yeah, some of it nice. would, and it seems like a relatively easy place to be able to move something. Yeah, wide open, you know. Yeah, it's wide open. Yeah. Um, okay. So, do we want to approve the move off demo? Motion to approve. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Diane. Aye. Thank you, Abby. Aye. Stephen. Was that a yes, Stephen? Uh, Val, you're in favor of your motion? I am. Stephen, are you muted? That was a yes, sir. Okay, great. Uh, chairs in favor of motion carries. Okay, so now- Oh, it's wait, like that, what, that looks like it was the garage, or is that the one we're looking at now? That's the next one. Okay. It, the garage is the next one, right? Matt, oh. I yes. had somebody text me and asked me if they could look at it. Uh, sure, of course. Yeah, just forward them my information. Uh, okay. Happy to. The people that own the property are living there, but uh, just let me know and I'll coordinate it with them. Okay, thanks. Great. Thank you. Okay, garage. Now here are the garage. Vintage yeah. of this, nine, 2001, Matt? Yeah, same, same time, Mr. Chair. Yeah, all right. Questions on this one? No. I Motion to approve. Thank you, Val. Uh, Diane. I, th this is for a demo move or move, off, right? demo. demo move off, yes. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so Diane, was that a yes? Yes, that's a yes. Great, thank you. Abby. Yes. Thank you, Stephen. Aye. Val. Aye. Here's in favor, motion carries. Okay, so now let's see what we got for new stuff going here. New dwelling and new garage. <coughs> okay, I can jump right into it uh, if you yep, prefer. Please do. Thank you. So uh, this is an application for a new dwelling. Um, it's relatively in a similar location, uh, basically centering it on the lot. The lot itself is actually a pretty large lot. Um, and there was, uh, they were able to actually acquire uh, the associated paper streets that are indicated as parcels A, B, and A. Um, so uh, it allows us to set it pretty far back off the road. Um, if you're familiar with the site, it's, it's pretty open, but um, there's uh, houses in the area are all you know, fairly similar size. Uh, we did a house at the end of the road, um, a 21 Woodbine, which was a similar size. Um, and so it's kind of tucked pretty far back there. But anyways, it's one of the larger lots. So I feel like it's got some, some breathing room. 
Uh, as far as the design is concerned, uh, we tried to keep it uh, obviously, you know, not go too, too high with the structure. We wanted it to have a fairly low uh, presence uh, on the street. And so it's uh, all a story and a half. The main mass is uh, plate height is, is pretty low itself. And uh, on the two What flight, is that? I can't really read it on that east elevation. What does uh, that the height is, yeah. you know, my reduced copies, yeah. it's pretty. Uh, Ollie, if we go a little to the left, I'd be able to read. There you go. Oh, it's, 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 it's shy of 27 feet. Okay. Thank you. Um, and so that was intentional. We wanted to actually, you know, have it be low and, uh, and, and kind of spread out and uh, try and keep the details fairly simple. Uh, integrated, you know, cottage corners or the use of cottage corners, uh, two or twos, which I think is pretty conducive to the area. Um, you know, try to integrate some additive massing on those two secondary wings with, you know, one story elements that project off the two secondary uh, facing gables. Uh, but again, the primary mass, we wanted it to have a very low presence and kind of spread presence. Um, the trim color and sash color is, is white, uh, but again, I think that works well with the cottage corners. Um, uh, brick chimney, uh, common, you know, water struck brick. So um, fairly straightforward on the back side of the property, which is just uh, not visible from a public way, um, is we've got some more uh, glass, uh, you know, it's high, uh, higher fenestrated, if you will. We've also integrated this um, shingle swale at the base of the building and at the second floor. Mm -hmm. This transition in this corner is a little funky, uh, but uh, everywhere else we feel like it just kind of helps kind of drop the scale uh, and uh, kind of a shingle style detail. So, um, but the back of the uh, building um, has a little bit more, uh, you know, fenestration uh, doors. Uh, the idea being that it, it's not overly fenestrated, but we try to concentrate it in the specific areas that we thought were important. Uh, again, uh, it opens up onto the rear pool area and, uh, uh, and a few additional outbuildings. If I could also point out, Mr. Chair, the second application before you this evening is uh, the garage. And the garage is attached uh, via a breezeway. On the drawing that uh, the board's looking at at the moment, you'll see that the uh, left portion of that elevation is cut off and um, there is a, a, a garage attached as part of the overall composition. Thank you. Matt? Um, I have yes. a question, Holly, hang up, hang on just a second there. Just have a question for Matt. On the west elevation, you're showing the rake of the main gable um, crossing over the chimney. Does that mean that the chimney is really shallow or does that mean that the rake overhang is really deep? Uh, rake overhang is pretty deep. Um, I think if you look at the side elevation, you can kind of see. Uh, is it like more than two feet? I don't think so. I think that the uh, chimney itself is not completely outside the building. Okay. All right. Makes sense. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, again, this is the elevation that uh, is, you know, shows the breezeway cut, uh, but it actually connects to uh, the adjacent garage. So, um, yeah, secondary elevations north and south are fairly uh, straightforward. So, um, with that, I'd love to hear the board's comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Matt. Okay, folks. Comments, questions. I have a general. I have a quick question. Are, are so I think it's a fantastic design. I, I love the cemetery. Uh, but are there similar houses in the neighborhood that look like this that are this size? I just don't. I mean, I love the design, but I don't want it to be a, inappropriate for the neighborhood. I, I could answer that, Mr. Chair. Mm. Yeah. Please. Abby, I would say that there is. There's definitely uh, 21 Woodbine for sure, um, has pretty similar uh, size and scale. Um, so I would say, yes, there is. Okay. I just wanted to know if there, if that was the nature of the neighborhood. So it, it's, it's mixed, you know, but I, I don't have a thing to say about this. Okay. Thanks, Abby. Um, Diane? Um, Matt, what is the length of the building? Or uh, the, or the... Sorry. Uh, the overall length. Uh, mm. It's going to be about 65 feet long. Somewhere in that range, yeah. I can find out um, if you give me one second. 
Um, but it's somewhere in that range. I can get you the exact number shortly. Okay, no, it's, I, I just, I feel that uh, there's quite a lot of land involved in the area of 24. I would be thrilled to see part of it drop down so that we had sort of uh, a first, a one story thing going around the corner. That's 60 feet across. I don't have the site plan right now, but it, but it comes in on, on the circular driveway. Are you changing that driveway? Um, currently, we, we probably will still be a circular driveway. Uh, we're working with, um, they're actually interviewing landscape architects at the moment. This is that landscape and driveway yeah. uh, was mine and it's not very good. Um, so I do think that it would be nice to have some kind of circular driveway just because that's what's there now. You can obviously see that the size of the circular driveway now is really, it's pretty expansive. So if we did do it, it would be uh, smaller, but um, I personally would like to see that, but it, yeah, it's- You have all those, you have all those parking spaces. You have the two where the cars are. And yeah, then you have the three on the other side. Mm -hmm. it's a, I have a feeling spares, that's gonna, spare feeling visitors that's change, uh, Diane. That that's probably going to change. Like I said, I, uh, I did that, and uh, it probably is excessive parking. And actually, uh, the owner said the same thing. So um, uh, you know, obviously, I we probably will have some parking that's concentrated near the garage. Uh, that's also where the mudroom entry is as well. So. Um, I feel that more most of the parking yeah. will be concentrated on that side of the house and not the way I've got it shown. So front of it and a little more natural because Woodbine is uh, not a highly paved street and most of the houses are sort of tucked there. The guy even with the uh, tennis court that backs onto Plum Street in the mm -hmm. in the south if his is a little more countryfied, and and this property is going along Woodbine is very uh, square. Everything is very square. Yeah. And I don't know whether this well, to drop a little bit. If you didn't have that second driveway, if your garage is over on the uh, left hand side, and then you have the whole parking space. That's a that's a big area given up to a parking space. I don't I know. Agree. I, I think uh, landscape architect's going to do a significantly better job than me. Yeah. Um, it's just a so, placeholder. So, Diane, yes. um, Matt, is, this is just a place saver, the landscape. I'm sure that he's taking what your, what your, uh, your concerns are about the parking into consideration and he'll pass them along to the landscape architect. But what's actually on the table right now is the design of the building itself. Do you have concerns about the building itself? I understand that, but we got into the parking space because this is 60 feet square behind the mm. driveway that comes in. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see it sort of move around with the with the property a little bit. That's all. It's 60 feet long and however it's long the top the roof is it's and that's it it has the dormers and stuff on back and front but that does not make an additive massing at all oh. can i also just point out diane that it may be kind of hard to see in this east elevation but there, um, there's two bump outs on the front that are one story so i i try the next i can bring some perspectives which might be helpful okay thank you matt um, okay, which elevation is that? Was that you, Diane? I got the east. I can't get it to change. No, no. Oh, the, the east Holly is what you're looking at. No. Oh, yeah. I just. So on the south elevation, you can see I the bump. One of the bump outs that, that Matt just mentioned. Right. Well, that's good. I didn't see them before because it didn't go down. So that's fine, knows what I'm talking about. If it doesn't fit in, that's one thing, but I just wanted to mention it. Okay. Thank you, Diane. Um, Val. 
Um, I am not sure that it's generally the size of the houses in the area from the locust map. Um, I didn't view this. I don't know if it was on the view list or not, but I, um, I appreciate a lot about this house. Um, it is long. It's 78 feet wide, I think. Um, oh, off. I am in favor of the house, perhaps, but maybe not attaching the garage because I think then it's going to be grossly oversized for the area unless it's screened properly. If it's just wide open, um, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Val? Uh, no, I mean, I, I agree with Diane. I'd like to see a little more additive massing, but I think that it's not atypical of the area. It's just a little bit larger than what's out there. Okay. All right. Thank you, Val. Steven. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I agree with what's been said. To Diane's point, I think on the east elevation, that main house, you know, I've, I've looked at this earlier and I was considering it. The symmetry, slightly not symmetrical works. I think by changing, for instance, the roof, the main ridge on the left side, which is uh, parallel to the front door, you could change that pitch, but it's not going to be seen anywhere except for on its face from the back and the front. However, I think it would start to throw the balance off. So I'm all right with that. I agree with Val's comments. And in particular, just a little bit of screening will go a long way. And it's not to hide anything, but it's with respect to the overall size of the structure if it's connected to the garage, uh, or at least the perception of it. Uh, on the, I would like to, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, just quickly comment if uh, Holly, you go to the last set of elevations and it shows the garage. Um, and I'll mention this just because the garage, I, I just, it doesn't show the house because it's a garage application. Oh, but wow. there's two, there's two big. Yeah, two comments I have on that, Matt. I think uh, it doesn't show in 2D, but I think regardless of the size of the garage and the size of the garage doors and that Dutch gable, which I'll comment in a minute, the garage being forward of the main mass, mm -hmm. not the covered porch, but the main mass, I think is going to work against you, at least in my mind. The mm -hmm. other thing is, is although I understand you're creating a, you know, covered area for the doors, that Dutch gable, it just creates such a strong sense of that roof mass that it's going to, it overwhelms to me the, the main structure. And mm -hmm. I think that what, contributes to that perception is the size of the garage doors. Again, I just mentioned that now because we have it in front of us and I'll pick that back up later. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Stephen. Hey, uh, yeah, I was okay with the house and certainly willing to uh, look at any revisions that you might make to accommodate uh, other board members. However, this garage, yeah, um, seeing them together like this is uh, makes me it's really to Diane's point about additive massing and, you know, to Stephen's point about this, the garage sort of overwhelming the house. I know we're not talking about the garage, but they are connected. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Sure. Um, okay. Now, okay. So uh, we've said what we need to say, I think on the main house and I, and I've even ventured forth into a discussion about the garage. I'm glad I saw them together. Should we motion for some revisions on the house then? So moved. That was you, Abby, right? It was. Can, Thank can... you, Abby. Great. Um, Val. I, I agree with that. Some revisions, sure. Okay. Uh, Diane. Diane might be muted. Uh, Stephen. Aye. Okay, chairs in favor. Diane, let's see if you're muted down there. Yeah, you're still, yeah, ask to unmute. I think maybe she now she's unmuted. There, yeah, there, there, there I am. Yeah. Um, All right. So are you in favor of the motion yeah. to hold for some revisions? Yes. Great. Okay. So chairs in favor, motion carries. That's that. 
And now let's turn our attention once again to the um, new garage, which we now have in front of us. Yep. Um, well, so you, uh, I think everybody got a chance to see, we intentionally obviously submitted the, um, the overall composition because the breezeway is pretty useful and helpful. Uh, and so we would love to keep it, but um, I definitely understand uh, the comments about pretend that it may be too large, uh, perhaps, or perhaps it's the roof or the roof configuration. Perhaps it's the cross gable. Um, you know, I could look at potentially integrating maybe a shed dormer across the front. But um, uh, anyways, I think between the board's comments, I think I have a, a sense of where you're heading on this. But uh, there is second floor program, uh, albeit small. And uh, there is a desire to have storage on the property for vehicles and uh, you know, uh, paddle boards, bicycles, things like that. They have uh, two young children. So uh, the storage is really important and the uh, uh, space above it, specifically with uh, COVID people working from home, um, the additional space on the second floor is uh, pretty useful. So, uh, but I definitely understand the board's comments about the, uh, the scale of it. So I'll listen to additional comments. Yeah, so is there anything else anyone would like to say about the garage? I've already expressed my concern that it's really too large in relation to the house. Um, Steven said a few things about the about the garage design. Anyone else? I I have just one thought. Um, yeah. I think the driveway coming in perfectly in the middle of the building mm. with a big circle in front of it is going to have this. You know, it's going to be an open vista to the house, which is is fine. But I think what might work in your favor is to have something that sort of mitigates that by like winding in. Mm -hmm. So the pu what the public sees is more vegetative and what happens is it opens up once you're inside the lot. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if it could be separated, I think it, 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 but that's based on what we can see. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Val. Abby, Diane, anything else to say on the garage before yeah. we... Yeah, I, I don't think I've said anything on the garage. You have not. That's correct. No, uh, I think it's too, too... The height is too tall. And I think it, it overwhelms... It actually over... It takes away from, you know, the, the, main, ma the main house. I think if you wanted to keep the, the, the breezeway, I didn't even know it was a breezeway as it's rendered. And I wonder if, if a, four columns, two on either side, might give it hmm. a, more yeah. of a, a feeling of airiness in a, in a sort of a backwards way. Yeah. Um, some of the coolest houses I've ever seen had breezeways like that. You just walk from one, one uh, building to the next and the, all there are is this open breezeway. So it's, it's kind of fun. I like the concept. Uh, I don't know if it's too elongated for the site plan as, as Val was saying, but um, so, so those are my comments. Thank you, Abby. Diane, okay. you to... Yeah, I was curious. I just, to how tall is the building? How tall is the garage? It's a uh, 24, some of that range. My reduced copies are so hard to see. I got to increase the size. I got 26.4. Thank you. And uh, I think it would drop down the foot and a half to the 25, which is what they're supposed to be. It would be good. And um, it would tuck it in. A foot and a half isn't going to make a big difference. I don't know what you have planned for the second floor because I can't move these drawings yeah. and it's like crazy. Um, I think it would be good. It would bring it down. I think maybe the gable could come down. It's very pronounced and the building is gutted on all four sides and the North and South are the most predominant. Obviously, as you can see, I would, if we dropped it down a foot and a half, it would maybe drop those gables down so they weren't so big. I'd like, yeah. I'd like, so I, 
I don't disagree with what the what the board's uh, the comments about the garage. It is a bit it is a big bulky. I think the cross gable contributes to that too. So, uh, Matt, you said that before, and I wanted to say that I, I I agree with you. I think that's part of the problem here is the cross gable is making it feel very voluminous from any which direction. Yes, and it's only three inches shorter yeah. than the house. Uh, yeah, I know Matt's aware that the height is an issue. Yes, definitely. Okay, so I think we can motion. Oh. I make a motion to hold for revisions. Thank you, Diane. Um, Val? Aye. Abby? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Uh, Diane? Aye. Chairs in favor, motion carries. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you. And you're not. We're not finished with you yet, young man. <laughs> um, now we're going to move over to 11 Davis Lane. And Ms. Mr. Chair, I think that the um, applications, there's one that's right after this. Uh, and I don't know, I think the labeling. Uh, so for example, the next one's the pool. Yeah. But uh, Mirka Hearn is the uh, landscape uh, architect on that. And it's the cabana. So I don't know. It's labeled as the pool first, which... Mirka will be presenting, and Albert be presenting the cabana, but I'm not quite sure. Oh, I see. We flipped it. I think so. Yeah, and it just you're, might. Be yeah, no, I get it. So, and I'm uh, here too. Uh, right. What? I am here as well. Yeah, no, I see it. So, yeah, so, so a minute, I can present it jointly. Okay, that's fine. Holly, what we have up on the screen right now is the application for the, the pool and the, the driveway and all that, the landscape stuff. Is that yes, correct? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. So listen, I'll just say from the outset, uh, and this is going to come as no surprise to any of you, um, in the last two or three days, we've gotten Lots. a dozen or more, <laughs> a dozen or more uh, letters of concern uh, from various neighbors, and th they're too numerous to read in. They, they just, for those of you listening, um, they were uh, disseminated to all the board members. So we've read, well, at least I'm hoping everyone's read those letters of concern. Uh, a lot of them have sim similar characteristics. Um, when it comes to responding to what Matt has to say here, uh, I, I'm going to try and figure that one out. But uh, so, Mirka, I guess first thing you do is you present your thing and then we'll take it from there. We'll see what happens. Thank you very much. Um, so, I've been just recently involved with this project and I've been told about the history and commotion and everything that happened uh, prior to me. I've been asked to help to finalize this uh, pool design uh, for the client and I team up with Matt and uh, we kind of brainstorm and he introduced me to the concern of the neighbors, uh, which I absolutely respect and appreciate. Uh, so the main concern was the location of the pool. So to initial, the initial application showed the pool, which been filed in March and June, showed the pool first in front of the main house along the Trinity, the second with the cabana along the Trinity. The next variation was uh, cabana mo was moved towards the uh, number I think 12 to the existing pool and the neighborhood. The main, main objection to the pool was the location itself. So I worked with Matt and we shifted the main body of the main building closer to the Trinity, allow for the pool and cabana be placed at the rear side of the lot, uh, which would allow for the more successful screening and eliminating any visibility or limit, limiting any visibility and possible the noise, which would create any family activity with the small kids, which would be there regardless if the pool is there or not, just to the point. So uh, we move the pool, main house closer to the Trinity, place the cabana towards the North property line. We try to be respectful of the neighbors at 10 uh, Westerwick to 
not to be too close to them at the same time. The neighbor at the, I believe so nine, Vesterik is a little bit on the another side. So practically this cabana and pool is located between of their side view. Uh, by moving the cabana closer to the north, I felt would be limiting the least of the view from the second floor of the neighbors. <coughs> the main concern of the noise, uh, client agreed to move the pool equipment in the basement. So we fully eliminate the factor of the equipment uh, creating any kind of noise or disturbance. The, the I just wanna make sure the location or the lighting at the same time, yeah, that's the detail. So, so those are the main aspects from the history of the pool where the pool is located now. So right now the pool is located in the rear end of the lab. It's 50, approximately 50 feet away from the Trinity. It's approximately 50 feet located away from the north property line. It's approximately 55 feet located from the um, lab on the west. And then it's approximately 145 feet located from the Davis. So I really feel like we try to be as centered and far from the public view. Um, regarding the screening, it's really unfortunate what happened and I fully, see why the neighbors would be upset with this really aggressive clearing. Uh, I've been working in Cisco on multiple few projects and the pools. Uh, I hope, um, uh, I understand enough of nature screening and I would, with the clients and new owner, they are really uh, engaging with it. They want to privacy as well. So we would like to rebuild the natural buffer the again the point how we want to combine or mix the natural vegetation is just use the vegetation which is at the cisco neighborhood so all native plants including my bruno bayberries and mix in and this is again to allow as much screening in year round few uh, evergreens including cedars and pines which are there uh, i know one of the comments from the neighbors was the height of the vegetation and again, the concern is to limit the visibility from the public way, which I believe with natural screening, which we propose to use the, and I'm happy to provide full on planting plan if that would be requested by the board. I believe all public views from Trinity and Davis uh, would be eliminated, eliminated by creating this approximately 15 to 20 feet thick buffer uh, of mix native plants. Uh, I know the neighbors are a little concerned about the height. Again, if you look around, there's, um, we know this is really exposed, the uh, exposed area. So even if we plan the pines and cedars, which are already present in the neighborhood, you can look around and they will keep the certain height. They will not be 30 to 50 feet high just because of the exposure and the elements. So again, all this vegetation which we would like to recreate along the buffer of Trinity and Davis would resemble as much what was there before, plus adding more of the evergreen just to allow for, for full screening and uh, just privacy for the neighbors. And there was one more comment is the lighting. Uh, I just want to address that. Uh, I do not know who was the builder for the pool next door. I usually specify LED lights for the pool, which are the two minimum. Uh, they are really just more utility and safety lights, just the ambient reflection of the pool to be used in the dark. Um, one more concern I would like to address at the same time, which was the size of the pool right now, I propose as 18 by 44, client is open to resize and go smaller if the board feel that would be appropriate to, to get the approval. And I will let Matt to add if there's anything else since we are kind of viewing the cabana and pool at the same time. Again, use of, just to finish, I guess, uh, the use of hardscape materials are the ones which we use on Nantucket, the board, uh, the deck, in grade or boardwalk in deck and at grade plus bluestone patio or I'm sorry the granite patio 
again, this is nothing out of ordinary. This is what's been um, used on many projects. Um, I guess that would be it. And Matt, please complete if there's something I left on top. Okay, thank you. Matt, now, you're uh, mute. Sorry? Ray? I am unmuted. Sorry, I was muted. Could uh, I? Could I just? Uh... No, hang on, Matt. Hang on a second. Diane, are you trying to say something? Yeah, I want to get see if we could get a better or bigger site plan. That... Did you say a bigger site plan? I got a little thing up in the corner. Not oh, even. Yeah. Well, listen. Holly can zoom in. Holly can zoom into various areas. It's kind of tough to get the whole thing large on the screen depending on what size I, I just want to see where how far down it is 11 Davis Lane should be fairly near a uh, Ahab when it comes in oh, oh, oh you I, want to see the locust plan yeah yeah okay I thought you wanted I to see, see the this. site plan so yeah Holly if you can go to I the locust plan uh go to the left yeah there you go uh it's coming in yeah okay so do you see that Diane yeah, I just, it would be good sometime if we got one that was sort of, all right, there's Heller's Way, there's Hummock Pond, come in Heller's Way, there's Westerwick, yeah. Yeah. there's Trinity. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see it. I just, uh, that's fine. I I thought it was further up, closer to Heller's Way than down. I forgot Trinity was so far down. That's fine. Okay. I see the point now thank you all right thanks Diane. now listen what i'd like to do while, while miracle is talking i scrolled down and saw who was listening in on this and there are at least two perhaps more people that would like to speak on this application one i'm pretty sure is matt arisman uh, the second one would be maureen gagliano and sarah alger are you here to discuss this or something else if you can hear me Are you still on? Let me see. Yeah, Sarah's on. I'm here for something else. Oh, you're here for something else. Okay, so listen, um, I would like to hear, uh, well, if if he would like to be heard. Matt, would you like to, to have the microphone now? If I could, Mr. Chair, just briefly, just to follow up on Mirka's uh, point, I just, um, if that's okay. Briefly. Briefly, yeah, so just in terms of the location of the pool, uh, the previous submission, uh, the pool was rotated 90 degrees and it was closer to Trinity Ave. Okay. Uh, the cabana as well was located closer to Trinity Ave, uh, and that's when we withdrew it. Um, I just want to point out that the pool has been pulled about as close as we can to the house and rotated uh, 90 so that it, it basically is about as far away from all the abutting properties. Uh, and centrally located on the property as well. Um, we obviously, uh, uh, owner, new owners have hired Mirka, who's incredibly well-versed in the natural vegetation of this area. And so um, she's kind of put together a pretty extensive list of uh, natural uh, indigenous uh, screening materials. That's all I wanted to add, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, now, other Matt. Uh, do, would you like to speak, Matt Arisman? You're muted. Sorry, you need to unmute. There you go. You're off. Right? Yep. All right. Well, thank you guys again for having me. And I'll try and keep this brief. I know we've spoken about this several times. So I'll try not to repeat points. Um, for those who are not familiar with Cisco, most of you are. Uh, obviously, we have very small lot sizes, low line vegetation. So it's very key to save any of that that we can. It's been now documented that the previous owner made the irresponsible decision to clear the entire lot beyond his bounds. Uh, and that put the property a little bit behind the eight ball, so to speak. Um, I don't know how you can truly restore natural vegetation that won't look manufactured, uh, if that makes sense. Um, if you look at satellite photos of the neighborhood, you'll see how badly a plan like this would stick out like a sore thumb. Um, really nothing about this proposal is consistent with the surrounding area and properties besides 12 Westerwick, which has been deemed an enormous mistake. Um, Cisco's a natural wilderness uh, with houses mixed in. 
Um, you know, and at this rate with proposals like this, if it gets passed, soon there's gonna be more stone and concrete than natural vegetation. And that's not an exaggeration. Um, it looks like, uh, to Mirka's point, uh, it looks like that there are some attempts at perimeter vegetation, um, but I don't see, and maybe I don't have the most detailed uh, landscape plan, but I, I'm not sure what they're doing around the immediate pool and cabana area for screening. Uh, so that's just a question. Um, it, it really saddens me to see um, sort of an exploitation of this beautiful area. Um, the neighborhood as a whole are largely against this type of plan and structures. Um, it is a quiet neighborhood and we would like to continue it to be a quiet neighborhood, but things like this really jeopardize that. Um, the previous owner, you know, and I, I, I want to make sure that I'm clear about this. Um, you know, we went back and forth through HDC meetings and the previous owner had a very similar plan. You know, the pool was rotated a little bit, but he met some resistance from both uh, residents of Cisco and the HDC. And he came out and met with several members. And when he came out and met with us, he was fully intent on, you know, compromising and trying to figure out the best way. And he came out and after meeting with several of our neighbors, he withdrew his plan for the pool and cabana on the spot. This was not premeditated. He came out and met with us and his mind was, was changed. Um, and I sincerely hope that if the Widdens, the new owners come and spend a little bit of time in Cisco, they really might have a, a, a little bit of a, a change of heart as well. Um, the previous pool, for me, the location of the pool wasn't necessarily the biggest pivot point. Um, the size of the pool was large already, uh, and it was deemed too large by several members of the board at previous meetings. And this pool is more than 100 square feet larger. Uh, the cabana area, again, is really nothing but a beacon of light and a sound amplifier. Uh, which is really unnecessary to say the least. And it is very visible from three public ways, uh, especially the cabana. Um, you know, this whole idea is very discouraging for me and my neighbors. Uh, and I truly hope that reasonable minds prevail in this matter. And I appreciate any attempts to please help us keep Cisco beautiful. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. Now, Mrs. Gagliano, would you like to speak as well? I know you're in there some, uh, oh, actually it's Joe, right? Yes, it's Joe Gagliano. Hey. Yes, hi. How are you doing? Um, you, would you like to speak, Joe? Yes, yeah, we, uh, we're we both here. Okay. Um, I, I'm Joe Gagliano. Uh, I'm at 10 Westerwick Way, which uh, I'm in a butter of this area. In fact, the cabana uh, deck area is abutting my, uh, or the back of our house. And uh, hopefully the HTC board remembers me a little bit uh, on bringing up some of the issues on 12 Westerwick when, we, uh, when you met and we had a discussion. Um, the areas of concern on this layout to us is uh, one, the landscaping. I mean, there's not a lot of detail on what's going on on the Northern end, as well as the leader line that's pointing to the shrubbery around it is cedars and pitch pine and when we talk to surfing hydrangea, they can be over 30 feet. Uh, that's not, I know there are cedars and pitch pines in the area. A lot of them are singular, but the grouping of what we see around the perimeter really puts almost like a wall, uh, reminds me of Sconset with the hedges. You know, it's really deep and high. And I really can't think of other areas in this area of Cisco that has such, such kinds of borders. So. The landscaping was a concern uh, to us because it was not in the spirit of the area. Um, we brought up pool size. When we talked about 12 Westerwick, it was 40 feet long, and we asked for a reduction. It, it went to 38, but now we look at this pool, and it's 44, so it's six feet larger. Uh, and the cabana is also near our property, and as Matt said, this is a conjunction of three different roads, Wall, Trinity, and Davis. And there is a visibility of the, of the cabana from those areas, as well as right over the deck of our property. So that does make a concern for a neighbor, our neighbors and ourselves, as well as the traffic that's on the area. Um, this whole complex is about 3000 square feet. When you talk about hardscape, cabana, pool, 
uh, decks. Uh, that's bigger than the house. So it's really gets to be a complex. And uh, if, I, if I close my eyes and I think about it, it is basically in the middle of Cisco in the natural area. And here we have a 3000 square foot entertainment area that brings in mechanicals and 12 Westerwick said they would put it in the basement and they did not. Uh, hopefully, you know, what you're saying will, will be true. Um, but it, it's not, it's a, it's a central complex that is different from a, the majority of the areas that I, I see in Cisco. And I can't emphasize the, the quietness and the silence and the night sky and the vegetation that we enjoy so much. I, I wrote in my letter that, that um, we bought our property from uh, Charlie Davis at Davis Lane. And he had us required to sign a covenant that would keep the area uniform as to what it is for landscaping and outbuildings. Now that covenant has expired, so it is no longer enforceable, but there's a spirit there that he is trying to demonstrate from our past that we, we would like to be stewards of and bring to the future of where we are now and the next generation. And if we continue having these complexes like this and 12 Westerwick throughout the area, the area is gonna be completely different. We're gonna lose lose what we have and it is as i said so heartbreaking to lose what we've had because you never get it back from a landscaping standpoint from a feel of the area as to what it is the moors the low-lying moors that we have and it's just something that we feel and you can hear matt speaking from the heart and we're speaking from the heart representing a lot of neighbors in in how this is being shown so uh uh, hopefully the board hears our plea uh, again. They had said at our previous 11 Davis meeting that we don't want to use 12 Westerwick as a model. It got away from us uh, and the cabana and, and the, uh, the whole area is something that's so visible from Westerwick and uh, other properties. So we, we, we want to voice our uh, opinion about this and hopefully not use this 12 Westerwick as a model. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me and thank you for the time uh, to the board. And thank you very much, Joe. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, so now I would like to open it up to the board. Um, has everyone had a chance? Is that, Diane, was that you? Yeah. Okay, you ready? Okay, yep, all okay, ready. Go ahead. I was, we're from the outside moving in. Mm -hmm. The planting around the whole property is inappropriate. There's not a place like that out there that has that. It, it is roving, ranging moors, and it always has been. And Charlie Davis, it was his property, and he developed it, and he was so careful about it. I used to be his mailman back then in the mm -hmm. olden days and talked to him a lot and the people all were happy to work with it. We had some interesting people out there and they they didn't push to the biggest house in the area. And that's what has kept this area being as close to what it can be. As Joe said, we don't want it to turn into to New Jersey, you might as well be in New Jersey. It doesn't need to be paved. It doesn't need to be landscaped with trees all around it. Look at the plan, the Trinity Avenue and the Davis Lane plan. There's trees going around it, definitely. How he was ever allowed, or the guy before him was allowed to cut down without being fined, without being cut down the, the existing property, I don't know. But in order to re stock it with what goes with the thing it has to be done very carefully sometime you don't just want cedars or or all one type it ranges from from oak trees 
to large trees, to some dead trees, and it all made the landscape of there. What is the necessity? How far are they from the beach to have a pool that is bigger than the house? The pool and cabana is, takes up more space than the house. That is ridiculous, and it is not good architecture. There's no reason why a pool should take up that space. This, this house, these people are in the midst of neighbors all around. Look at your site plan, all those houses. So everything that goes on on that property is going to affect all the people around them. And pools that are, that are contemplating being as big as this pool is contemplating is going to make noise. And the people who live around the house should have as much right to enjoy their land as these people. I think the pool has to be smaller if they are allowed one. The cabana, they can walk the 10 feet from the pool into the house and cook. They don't need it all outdoors. At some time, we have to decide that too much is too much and, and do something about it. Because also I'm trying to find where the fencing is that goes around the pool. I don't see that specified out, so I'm not sure, but they don't show a fencing. <clears throat> There's gotta be one somewhere. And this is an area that we are mission to protect and we have not done a super job recently. So I would like to see this, <clears throat> have the revisions and have the pool and the cabana down to a normal size, not so that it's bigger than the house. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Abby, are you ready? Abigail? Let's see. I, I muted myself. I muted there, there was a thing going on in the periphery. Mm -hmm. um, so Cisco isn't really, uh, it's, it's not a place I spend a lot of time, but I did as a teenager, um, and I just remember, you know, sandy roads going down to the dunes and then falling, you know, going to the beach, nothing was there. So, well, that's not true anymore. Um, but so looking at this, um, this, the way the trees are around the perimeter of the lot it, it is, is, is taking away of, from the beauty that, that I once knew out there, the openness that the neighbors are talking about, that, that doing the perimeter with trees, uh, it just, it, it, uh, it's unnatural uh, for that environment. And I wonder why it isn't the opposite way. Why aren't we screening what is offensive to the neighbors, what the privacy they want, keep it right in next to the pool and leave the openness around the area for everybody to enjoy. Um, so that's one thought I had. The other thought is that, um, we need a, we need a rule that says that you only can brush cut what you need to do to work on your, on your house or whatever. You can't brush cut the whole area. I mean, that should be some kind of an offense, but I don't know how to put that in gear. Um, also, I'm just wondering about the, the zoning and the planning board who or whoever is looking at this area and saying you can have pools here. I mean, I don't quite understand um, the insensitivity of that. I mean, I think there are areas like we were just talking, we were just we were just on, you know, off Boulevard and there are lots of pools there, but it seems to have you know, it seems to be a lot more deciduous trees and, and vegetation and growth. So it sort of just sort of disappears down the shell driveways. But here where it's open, and this is part of, this is what Cisco is, it's an open dune and we're trying to live on it, but don't, don't turn it into suburbia. Um, so those are my general thoughts, I mean, I don't even want to go into the sides of the pool because I, I just, 
I don't, I, I'm trying to get my head around this whole concept of sort of dividing this area up into, you know, everybody has a pool. Yeah. Okay, Abby, thank you. Stephen. Uh, sure, thanks, Mr. Chair. So I guess, <clears throat> as opposed to get into lengthy comments on the vegetation, I agree with what's been said. Uh, I think that in particular, I agree with the concept of shielding with screening the pool, which should not be visible from the street with vegetation close up. Uh, I think that's terribly important. I also think that there, we might even do some type, I, I know people are gonna go nuts, uh, but the idea that uh, well, let me just say it this way. I think this isn't Mass Equid Ave. And I think these types of landscape plans start to make it Mass Equid Ave. And what I mean by that is high black or scotch pines, uh, yard space you can't see. Uh, Cisco is historically an open, open space, uh, at least in, in my lifetime. And as far as back looking at these different records and the aerials that are available. Uh, and I think that that is a, it's in a historical setting that should be preserved. I don't think that that's necessarily incongruent with pool use. I think pool use is incongruent with some of the lifestyle choices that people in the neighborhood would like to have. And I don't disagree with that, but unfortunately the HTC doesn't have control over it. What we do have control over in my reading of the acts and our responsibility are the setting, how uh, proposed structures present themselves relative to the historic setting, and I think certainly the size of the pool is one area. The clustering of the cabana next to the pool is another element that I think needs to be addressed. Uh, in addition to the size of the pool, this concept of the cluster, uh, it seems more appropriate that the cabana be closer up to the pool, maybe even relocated towards the, uh, let me get my bearings here, the west. Uh, and then shrinking down the area that needs to be screened in order to preserve that sense of open space. And uh, I would like to under better understand the relationship of what's proposed uh, the, to the other structures in the area. So I'd ask mm -hmm. for just a mock-up of an aerial with the proposed pool and cabana and for reference, the approved home on the lot, along with uh, showing the neighboring structures. So some type of an outline on an aerial view, I think would be helpful. I think I mentioned the size of the pool's concern and clustering that cabana tighter in and maybe relocating it would be helpful. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, let's see, uh, Val. Hi. Um, I think everyone knows how I feel about pools out here. I think they're completely inappropriate. Um, it is sad that the original developer's um, intent has gone with the uh, letting go of the restrictions that were in place before, but can't do anything about that. Um, I agree with everything that's been said. I think it's too formal um, in a very informal area. I think less is more. So I would also venture to say that boardwalks and um, driveways with whatever it is, gravel and patios, and especially um, the little out structures that while they don't count for square footage for zoning are large and looming over the horizon out there, those could be eliminated. I think, you know, if you want a little building to go next to your pool, it could be a very simple little shed. It doesn't have to, you know, really draw attention to itself because this house is gonna draw attention to itself. It's huge. Um, I just think things should just be simple. And I do agree with the idea. I don't remember who said it first, but of keeping everything consolidated opening up this yard to a big green grass lawn and just closing it around the periphery is not really gonna help um, screen anything. And uh, an example of that is the house um, that was already approved next door. So I would ask for revisions to simplify the entire site plan. Okay, thank you Val. 
And for my part, uh, I agree with much of what has been said. And I just do, I want to underscore a few things just so that everyone knows where I am coming from. Um, so I believe that the idea of having the plantings be less at the perimeter of the property and more moved in to isolate the problem area, i.e. the pool and the cabana, would, would do two things. One, the, the screening would be more effective. And two, it wouldn't give the illusion that, well, not an illusion, a reality that, 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 that the uh, owners of this property were essentially fencing themselves off from the rest of the neighborhood. So I'd like to push all that uh, screening back away from the property line and closer to where the pool is. Mirka, you, you were very uh, transparent when you said that the owner was okay with the idea of reducing the size of the pool. So of course, everybody's gonna endorse that. Um, somebody mentioned the fact that the north side of this property doesn't really have any screening to speak of, so I'd like to see that enhanced. Um, pool equipment in the basement, good idea. I don't know whatever became of that in the first iteration. Uh, but generally, I agree with, with everything that's been said. Okay, so um, if there's no more discussion, I think we know what the motion needs to be on this. I, I'd make venture to make a motion. Mm, go. Uh, motion to hold for some revisions um, and a very more significantly detailed um, landscape plan, plan, planting plan, and reduction in the pool size and everything that we've mentioned. Uh, yeah, I, right, I think so. Okay, so that is the motion. Thank you, Val. Um, Diane. Aye, 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 aye. Thank, aye. thank you. Abby. Aye. Great, Stephen. Aye. And Val. Aye. All right, chairs in favor, uh, obviously, and the motion carries. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, so uh, thanks, Mirka. And now, Matt, do you want to present? Uh, we can. I'm sure we can do this very briefly, but we'll sure. more on the agenda for the cabana. Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, <clears throat> I think the um, site plan might be a great place to start. Uh, you see where we've located it again, just based on previous comments from. Uh, the neighbors and the board, um, we thought that this was an appropriate place, kind of tucked uh, further away from Trinity and Davis. As Mirka mentioned, we are planning to put the pool equipment into the basement. Um, so the rear section, uh, that, that highlighted area, which is the red, is really just the enclosed ground cover. Uh, that's the only portion of ground cover. Um, and there's the area just in front of it, which is here, which is intended to enclose the uh, pool equipment that would go away. Uh, now that we moved that. Um, the other thing is we just rotated the roof line. Matt, uh, Matt, sorry. Uh, maybe I'm the only person that didn't understand that. So you just took your marker and you just scribbled on this piece to the north of the red. Correct. Said, That's going to go away. W did, was that like used to be where the pool equipment was going? If it was, was originally correct. Yeah, that was where the pool it equipment was It looks like going. an outdoor shower. Okay. So an outdoor that, shower that, and, and That's going to go away. In the pool equipment, primarily the pool equipment, uh, we'll have to find a new location for the shower. But I just want to primarily point out that this portion of the enclosure, uh, probably two thirds of it, was allocated for pool equipment. Okay. Uh, just based on the neighbors uh, that spoke recently, um, we will be putting that into the basement. So that should really eliminate the um, the sound aspect of it. So that will be something we'll be altering. Um, Put the kids down there too. Excuse me? Put the kids down there too. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're going to make some noise too. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, here we okay. go. They're very quiet. Um, so, and then the only thing we did was you'll see that uh, the south elevation, uh, uh, which I could say was probably the most visible, uh, if it is, again, it's pretty far back from the road. Uh, is drawing three and we just rotated the eave so it's a very you try to simplify it you know uh, valves to your point 
Um, it's just a simple roof covering and it is, it's essentially an outdoor grill area and then a, and then a half bath. Um, and just try to keep it simple. But again, we think that the eave line facing uh, south was uh, the, the least busy um, of, of the options there. So, and then Mr. Chair, just again, you can kind of see a, a drawing five and two, um, there's that enclosure that was primarily for pool equipment and that will be going away. Right. But other than that, it sounds like there's gonna be some changes to the uh, pool plan. So um, I would also just point out that we had reduced both the pitch of the roof and the uh, header beam fairly significantly uh, based on suggestions by the board uh, in the previous iteration. So this uh, design is essentially where it left off previously, but the roof line gable has been rotated so that to not present a gable forward to, uh, to the road. So that, that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, board members. I think it could be uh, simplified even more. You don't need windows in the gables. Um, just, I don't even know why it needs a roof, but maybe it could be something as simple as just a natural to weather pergola over that area. Um, anything to mitigate structure in this area would go a long way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Is that it, Val? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Diane, you, you were just seconding that yep. comment. But I, I, heard that. I agree with her completely. I think on the south elevation, it looks like you're standing in line at a takeout <laughs> place. It, th there, as I said before, when I was saying originally, if 10 feet from the house, do they have to have, you know, a grill and a thing and a light uh, uh, window up in the thing. How tall is the cabana? Why can't it be as thou said, just a roof over it? Why does it need all the doors? And it's what, are, what are you closing off? There's a half a bath in there, Diane. Yeah, 14 feet. I finally could see it. Sorry. Uh, I it has to be simpler. It should just be what it's supposed to be. If they want to put a john in there and a grill in case it's, it's raining. Otherwise, it shouldn't be. The south elevation is silly. Look at it. It has a, a full length building, has a, has a shelf on it so they can put the food out. It, it isn't a restaurant and it isn't a takeout. It's a pool for the family. So I agree that it should be much simpler. Uh, and I mean, I tell you, they don't have any intention of doing takeout. Looks, oh. I know you don't. I say it looks like that, Matt. Come on. No, no, it looks like what it looks like Surfside out there. Looks just like Surfside. <laughs> but make it simpler. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Diane. Stephen. Uh, yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Matt, I'm certainly not adverse to a simpler structure. Uh, I do think I kind of would go the other way if the structure remains. I think I am not, I'm concerned about the current, the, the recent cabana that was approved there. And I don't think it's in keeping with the nature of the area to have outbuildings that are basically a roof or open on three sides. So, and I think that this might also address some neighbor concerns, although my intent is not to address noise, it's the architecture. I would think that the Western, that if two walls were open, so facing the pool and facing the house were to remain in its current location, but be closer to the pool, so that the North wall is enclosed and one wall in this instance of how it's laid out currently, the West wall would be enclosed in some type of a configuration. So that, <clears throat> As a passerby, you're not seeing through and seeing a floating roof because of the low vegetation. You're seeing what is really more perceived as a structure with an opening in it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's an important element of outbuildings, it, in particular in this location where our outbuildings are typically solid except for the cabana uh, at the unnamed property adjacent to this one. 
Mm -hmm. um, so if that's helpful, uh, those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Thank yep. you very much, Stephen. Uh, okay, Val, you're up at bat. I I went first, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. Uh, me, nope. Ray. What? I think it's me. Oh, I'm sorry, Abby. That's okay. Right. I, I, I didn't, I don't, I wasn't on the main structure, so I don't know what the architecture is, but to me, this looks a little on the modern side. And as we were talking, I imagine more of a, you know, a real, uh, just an out tertiary building sort of just, I don't know, uh, maybe it's a lean to, maybe has a broke back, you know, maybe it's just, just so, maybe it's that simple. So I agree with my board members. Okay. Yeah, I think the consensus view is smaller. Uh, so that's all I have to say, smaller. Um, okay, can we motion for uh, some revisions to this application? Make a I'll make a motion to hold for revisions. Thank you very much, Diane. Abby. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Thank you, Val. Aye. Diane. Aye. The chairman. Aye. Um, motion carries. Thanks. Thank you all very much. All right. Thanks. Uh, uh, now, listen, I see Jesse, Jesse's iPhone, but he's not on, right? Right. He went, he had a birthday. And he said that he wouldn't return until he was going to monitor and he, come he's back. He's back for old business. Okay. All right. So we'll just continue on this course. Okay. So next up, we've got uh, MCA+. Plus. First, we're going to hear about 19 Longwood Drive. Correct. Okay. Hello, Mark. Hi, how are you? Um, Hi, how are you doing? This is, this is out in Tom Never's East. Um, okay. Long, yep. Long, there's an existing guest house. I think what our first application before you is the move demo. Yes, it is. Existing home. That's correct. It is built in uh, 1998, I believe. It's a Cape. Um, we've had some interest in the property or building, I should say. So we have some confidence it will be recycled. Um, it should be recycled. It's actually in good, really good shape. Um, and so that is what's before you. This, this house sits much closer to the road than the, the next application you'll be seeing for the guest house, which sits Wait. closer in proximity to the main dwelling. Mark, hang on. Uh, you're this, looking at, yeah. Is this the house that we're removing? No, that's what we're proposing. Yeah, I thought I thought you had moved demo first on your. Uh, we, we do. do. We do. Sorry, that's just me. I pulled up both applications at same time. Try to ease. I think we just <laughs> let, let's take care of the the easy stuff. Well, theoretically easy stuff first. All right, guys. Okay. Do we have uh, photographs of the existing house? Yes. Okay. Should great. Coming up. That looks like the pool application, Holly. Uh, Mark, did you say 1999? 19, uh, built in 98, I believe. 98, okay. Yep. Okay, now we're not seeing it. Yep, hold on. Sorry. Okay. Here we go, sorry. I'm making a list of uh, PDFs. This looks like it. There's the existing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, that looks like a perfectly good house for the right person. Yeah, I agree. Hopefully, you get a taker. And all, and again, this is like in an in an area that uh, you could fairly easily move something like this. This is very true. Yeah. Okay. Uh, listen, does anybody have any issues, comments, questions on the move demo of this building that exists on this property? Not me. Uh, okay, I don't hear much. So can I have a motion perhaps? To approve is submitted. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, Stephen's made a motion to approve the move demo of this existing structure. Abby. Aye. Thank you. Diane. Aye. Thank you, Val. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Chairs in favor, motion carries. Very good. Okay, so now on to um, 
Freedom. Now, interestingly, okay, oh, I see, it's a guest house. All right, so we're going to be reviewing a new guest house. That's right. So this to replace the guest house we just had the demo move of. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have a picture of the main house, Mark? Uh, I don't know. I took one. I don't know that it showed up and it made it to the house. It would be good to see what it's supposed to be matching. Exactly. It's it's a the existing main house. I mean, I we should get you a photograph, but it's a I believe it's a five bay big box built in about 94 on the property, probably all of 30 feet in height. Uh, gray, gray greenish trim, uh, terratone sash. Colors would be to match with this building as well. Uh, asphalt roof, I believe, to match main house. Mm -hmm. um, I, for one, would love to see that because this house now has grown and I want to see scale wise how that works. It's actually the exact same ground cover. It's just been pieced out a little bit more. So there's more added amassing versus the big box of the previous guest house. They actually didn't have any more ground cover to work with. So we couldn't make it any larger. So this yeah. acts as sort of pool house, guest house. Sorry, not to directly address you. Um, hey, Mark, I do have a question. Yes. Yeah. It looks to me like your doors and everything are right there flush, almost flush with grade. Is there no, um, is this a slab? Again, on it won't be a slab on grade, but it will be a mud sill. So we are going to drop it tight to the ground because it will act as a pool house mm -hmm. more than purely just a guest house. The pool will sit forward of this west elevation. Okay. Just curious. Yeah. All right. Um, so Val, did you have any concerns about this design? I can't really say, um, per se, looking at it, no, but I- You want to see the main house? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, fair enough. Diane. Yeah, that sounds good. I didn't get it all because I had to, uh, somebody came in to say something. So what? Just tell me quick what the proposal was. Well, so uh, go ahead. The, the proposal is for a, 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 a new guest house slash pool house, and it will um, replace the guest house you just um, uh, approved the, the move demo of. Um, and if, if, if I'm able to share screen for a moment, I can pull up a picture of the existing main dwelling if that helps. Okay, that great. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you, Holly. Uh, do, you, do you see the existing structure? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's this is a couple of years ago, but yeah, it's, it's pretty vanilla. Um, um, I think the guest house will add a bit of charm to the property, hopefully. It's interesting because that doesn't look like the footprint that you're showing on your site plan. Like there's a bump off it now. Guys, I also just sent Holly a photo. Um, so Holly, if you go back to sharing. I'll, I'll stop share on your email. The stuff that wastes time. Yeah. Pictures, pictures, pictures. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, there it um, is. Mark, is that correct? Okay. That is correct. Yep. Okay. That's it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not much more to have, that. Unfortunately. That's, and that's tucked back off the road. You can't see either of these structures from the street. Okay. Good to know. All right. So listen, Val, why don't we circle back around to you now that you know what the main house looks like? That'd be all right. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, I'm pulling it up on my computer so I can like scroll through it closer. Hmm. <clears throat> I 
somebody has anything to say, please jump in. Yeah, so maybe I will go around and, and Val, you can chime in. So, Stephen. Uh, sure, Mr. Chair. I, <clears throat> no offense to whomever owns the home or who designed the main house, but I think this is a clear net gain. <laughs> um, there's actually additive massing. Um, my concern about the, uh, the West, you know, I have minor concerns, but looking at, uh, you know, doing a Google drive by this thing, the, for instance, the East elevation with the dormer sizes relative to the roof size and the, and the mm. wall below it, I, this house, I, I can't imagine will not be anything but invisible unless we have a tsunami, um, that takes out the trees. So, um. I do think it would be helpful in the future and not just for Mark, but anyone who comes in, please take some photos and at least have them handy uh, out of respect for our time. And Mark, this isn't on you. I just want to take the opportunity to comment on that. Sure, uh, of thank, course. thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Stephen. How about you, Diane? I think the, I think the college or whatever he wanted to call it is, is, is nicer than the house. Mm -hmm. so, thank you. Yes. If it can block the house, that will be great. I think it has much more charm and and uh, good points. So that's my that's my eye. Thank you, Diane. Um, Abby, you you too were concerned that you wanted to see the main house, and and now you've done so. So yeah, I yeah, I I I still am sort of um, fuzzy on the context, like the site plan where it is on the site plan i don't know if we oh well let's go back to the site plan oh, okay yeah there you go okay so um can... yeah okay so to steve's point uh who the hell is going to see this <laughs> um and so yeah no i think it's a cute house i don't have a problem with it it's a little big but but who cares if you've got this you know uh you're in the woods there Hence, long wood drive. Yeah, and and it is um, it's relatively low. Yeah, the ridge height. I'm fine. Okay, all right. Uh, Val, do you have anything now that you've had more time to consider? No, I I think just the little roof thing over the shower is a little bit different, but. I guess everybody thinks we're not going to see it. So, oh, you know, it's interesting that so, Mark, that looks like it's sort of a pergola, open rafter, yeah, cedar, uh, natural to weather. It faces towards the house, so away from the road. Yeah, I'm not sure you'd see any of that. Okay, yeah. I'm not sure faces away from the road yeah if you go back to your site plan that's the that elevation faces towards the main house in towards the driveway there it is yeah is that really yep right there be more visible oh i guess not no long wood drive you will never see that okay yeah uh, well listen i think that uh i think stephen was the one who first said that it's a vast improvement over the house um, and I agree with that. So I'm okay with this, particularly given it's limited to no visibility. Anyone want to venture something here? Motion to approve is submitted. Okay, let's there try it out. Let's try it out. Abby. Aye. Very good. Uh, Diane. Aye. Very good. Val. Aye. Even. Aye. Chairs in favor, motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you. Mark. And now how about uh, this pool thing? Yeah. yeah. So the, the pool will actually occupy from the site plan an existing uh, half court, I guess. Oh. Um, and sits forward of this guest house slash pool house, I guess. Um, it has an auto cover. There's no fence proposed. And all, all that existing vegetation really for the most part will remain because they obviously want to remain screened from the from the street mm -hmm. okay questions comments from the board 
Ah, uh, not hearing anybody. Do I need to call on someone? Motion uh, to approve is submitted. I have a comment. Oh, oh. yeah, go ahead, Steve. Um, I just want to say, you know, I'm stating the obvious here, but unlike recent applications, the wooded nature of this lot makes all the difference in the world Yeah, to me, um, I think to everyone, but just, just to be clear, um, it's not a, it's not a much different size pool, but in the cabanas, you know, the dwelling is much larger, but so anyways, uh, Val's motion, I'm um, and I. Okay. So Val's made a motion to approve. Stephen has just uh, said that he's in on that. Diane? Aye. Thank you. Abby? Aye. Very good. Val? Aye. Chairs in favor, motion carries. Okay, great. Uh, now we are along to 8 Sheep Pond Road. Thank you. We are cooking with gas here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're almost we're almost through the portion of the agenda that we didn't cover at last Tuesday's meeting. I meant to say cooking with candlelight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> boy. Okay. All right. This. So we're out in the land of, I, I kind of jokingly refer to as um, misfit architecture. It's kind of a, it's a funky neighborhood for sure. Um, so we have, there's, this is a property with two existing dwellings on the lot. Uh, the new owners are trying to make efforts to make them a little bit more similar. They're very dissimilar from one another now architecturally. Um, so we're proposing some modest um, additions and alterations to the to the buildings. I think we've included the before and afters. This is the larger of the two structures boxed in red on the site plan uh, okay. as it exists now. All right. Um, <clears throat> okay. Here's the good stuff right here. Yeah. So. We have uh, existing, boy, it might be hard to see, but we have photographs of existing elevations and then the proposed drawings. Uh huh. Um, windows will be replaced. Trim is proposed as a, 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 it actually gray sash, gray trim is what they'd like to do here, kind of a two tone. Um, we have uh, new decks, uh, full replacement of doors and windows. Uh, roof will, ooh, I can't recall if we're doing red cedar on this or existing asphalt. They were just recently done prior to their purchasing, but. Okay. Hey, Holly, if you could scroll to the right a little bit so that we can see the north elevation, the south elevation, what the existing photos show. Well, maybe I can move my little thing here, which is blocked. Uh, can you, uh, eh, hold on. Best as I can get. I, what I need to do is move my little. Yep, your people. My people, exactly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. And, and would you mind, uh, Holly, no. down some more? Okay. Drink that warm. That red thing is. Uh, the red cooler is. All right. Um, anyone have questions, comments on this application? Nope. Meaning that you're okay with it? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Stephen? Uh, no improvement. Thank you, Mark. I don't know. Okay, thank you. Uh, Abby? Fine. Uh, okay, we haven't voted yet, but we're about to. Um, Diane, are you there? Yeah. you have any uh, issues or concerns with this? Aye. Uh oh, <laughs> wait, wait. Before we get uh, into the voting, uh, somebody needs to move. Uh, why don't I make a motion then? I would love that. <laughs> 
Okay, motion to approve as submitted. There we go. Thank you, Abby. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, Stephen. Aye. Great. Diane. She's probably muted. Val. Aye. Oh. Aye. Oh. Aye. Thank you, Val. Aye. And thank you, Diane and Abby. Aye. Okay, and the chair is in favor. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next up, second dwelling edition. Mark, why don't you just uh, give us yeah. an idea of what's happening here? So we see that we see your second dwelling. Yeah, that's, that's correct. And um, we've, we're basically making mostly the modifications to the back side of the building. Um, back meaning away from again, away from the water. Yeah, exactly. It's a funky kind of a funky building now, uh, probably built in the mid 70s. Mm -hmm. um, and there's those are existing elevations of it today. All right. Okay. And plans, okay. photographs, and then our proposed elevations with the um, um, photographs. And uh, <clears throat> these, this will be uh, painted to match the house you just approved, sort of a two-tone gray again. Windows are being changed to match that structure. Um, deck reconstruction, proper entry. We're sort of rebuilding and dormering the sort of trying to actually salt box the back half of this building to make the additions work a little bit more harmoniously than what's there today, in our opinion. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Holly, can you scroll down a little bit so we can see the west and the south elevations? I can't. There we go. Great. All right. Mm -hmm. See the salt box. Yeah. Okay. Much much of the west elevation today are picture big picture windows that we're replacing with double hungs and some new exit doors as well onto the decks. Okay. Comments, questions. Motion to approve is submitted. Like it, Val. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, it's a big improvement over the napkin and hammer design. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, uh, Abby. Aye. Thank you, Diane. Aye. Thank you, Diane. Uh, Val, you're in favor of your motion. I am. And the chair is in favor of Val's motion, so the motion carries. Okay, that was that. Next up, Cabana. Oh, oh, an addition onto the cabana. Okay. Well, sort of. It's a modification. It's actually an existing garage, which they're going to convert to a cabana building. Oh, okay. And so we have a dormer modification on there to accommodate some doors. That's it? Uh, new doors and windows. Yep. Okay. To match what we've just seen. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Motion to approve. You don't I want haven't seen it yet. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at it on my computer. Oh, 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 oh okay. It's okay. It's like, wow. No, so I that's haven't. existing. There's the existing. Okay, so you're just doing a little shed dormer and a little yeah. paint roof over the front and yeah. changing out the windows. Okay, so Val, does your motion still stand? Yes. Okay. Uh, Abby. Aye. Thank you. Diane. Aye. Thank you. Stephen. Aye. Thank you, Val. Aye. Cheers in favor, motion carries. Okay, that's the end of the cabana. Thank you. How about the pool? So there's a pool there as proposed uh, in relation to the cabana. What's really kind of missing, and maybe if you look at the aerial, it might help, but there is some, um, there is vegetation. Um, I think if I were on the board, I'd be concerned if there's no vegetation appearing from the pool to um, sheep pond. Uh, but there actually is some existing that would remain in place. And I think we would propose some additional to, again, screen this pool from the road. They don't want to be exposed to the road either. Um, so if, if you need more vegetation or planting plant, I can certainly understand that. Um, but but what you're suggesting is that the vegetation that's there will remain. Yeah, it, yeah. A lot of we would only clear out what we need to to accommodate the pool area. And then they would be bringing more 
indigenous, ideally plant material to further screen it. Because it, as, as looking at our Gron site plan, you, you really don't get a sense of that. Um, so. It doesn't look like in the photo that there's much vegetation either. That's what I'm saying. There's, there's some that will re clearly remain and there'll be more that will need to be enhanced. There's a clearing sort of to the right of that and you can see in the aerial that I think that they'll need to enhance clearly. Can, can I mold that direction a little bit, Mr. Chair? Sure. So uh, Mark, I think for me, certainly the additional vegetation is appropriate. I think uh, consistent with recent comments, it should be vegetation that's close up to the pool. Mm -hmm. um, obviously uh, naturalized type plant materials, indigenous in a naturalized indigenous kind of a layout so that this really blends and is hidden uh, and it doesn't look like it's, it's, there's something hidden behind a plant wall. And mm, uh, other than that, I, I wouldn't have a concern about it. So uh, my point there would be to follow up with a uh, landscape plan for the screening. I have a question. Go ahead, Val. This is just a general question for you mm -hmm. guys about pools. We never ask about lighting. Oh. And way out there in the middle of nowhere at night, when I'm sure there is not a whole lot of lights on, you know, is that going to be a concern for anybody? So just so you know, town council has said that, that it's not within our purview to uh, do lighting unless it's on commercial structures. But Val, you're, you're aware that there's a, a town bylaw, the, the dark sky thing? Right? Yeah. yeah, I do, but I don't think anyone enforces it. I'm just asking. Yeah. Uh, it came up recently where we were, we, we brought it to town council whether we were supposed to be reviewing lighting and the answer was no. Lighting well, fixtures, but I'm talking about a light, yeah. Well, I guess. It's lighting of the landscape, we're not supposed to do anything? No, no. Um, frankly, if we did, we would be here every night, seven days a week. Um, I mean, look, look, I, I agree that pool lighting and with a pool illuminated and that sort of thing, but I, I'm not sure that we have that within our power to regulate right now. Okay. Was just an observation. Not, you know, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I'm just telling you what uh, town council told me. Um, okay. Looking to approve with uh, Steve's or Steve, you make it. Uh, well, can, I, can I ask you to hold the motion? Yeah. Because yeah. I'd like to, um, I'd like to uh, hold this pending a. Uh, landscape screening plan right I, I think it's important enough in this area and it's visible potentially visible enough mark yeah. i don't have complete faith in you but yeah sure. you're just doing our due diligence that might be a good way to approach it is that okay yeah, of course so why don't you make that motion steve so uh the motion would be to hold the pool uh for a landscape screening plan perfect thank you val hi diane hi Abby. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Chairs in favor, motion carries. Thank you. And I believe we have one more thing for you, right? That's right, the shed. The shed. Okay. Let's take a look at that. Oh. What well, is that's about as simple as you can get. <laughs> Got it. As simple as you can get. Motion to approve is submitted. All right. Thanks, Stephen. Val. Aye. Diane. Aye. Thank you, Abby. Aye. And I'm going to take a short break. Okay. Thanks for holding out for the votes, uh, Stephen. Aye. Chairs in favor, motion carries. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. So ne next up, we're going to a pool uh, at 55 Sanctity. Do we have somebody to represent that at the moment? Oh, there's Lindsay. Okay. Yes. 
<laughs> hey, so Lindsay. Yes. Abby has just gone off to take a break. So you want to proceed with a four person board? Um, yeah, I think so. Okay. For so, chair, I do have comments for oh, yes, right. advisory board. Okay. Um, fairly straightforward. Um, obviously, lack of visibility um, is comes to mind with this one. And so there's mm. no concerns from Wisconsin Advisory Board. Thank you. Okay. And staff. Board members. I think if Wisconsin Advisory Board has no concerns, then I'm not going to either. <laughs> That's kind of the way I feel about it. Uh, Diane. Me too. All right, Stephen. Um, uh, you I'll, see voice, I'll voice my concern in the vote. In the vote? Yeah. Um, well, is it something that you could share with us? Yeah, I, I don't I don't want to belabor it. I, I just I'm looking around on Google and I think the setting itself is inappropriate for a pool of that size. Um, but again, I'm not I just will voice my opinion in the vote. I have a suggestion. Uh, there's another link after this application that were photos that were emailed showing the screening um, of this site as it exists. And I think it was really helpful to look at that. If you have a concern. Yeah, you know what? I don't know that I saw that link. Did I look at, I might've just blinked twice and saw 55 Sankety. Yes, okay, I'll, I'll look at that, thanks Bill. I'll pull it up now. I see it. it Don't pull up on my account. Right here. Well, so should we just move forward with the motion? Yeah. Okay. Let, I'm just letting Steve scroll through, but I would okay. motion to approve uh, with our usual caveat that it is screened at the time of inspection and thereafter. I like that. Okay. Thanks, Val. Yeah. Uh, I say I, and can I just make one silly comment, I guess? No, of Is course they not. want to pull 15 by 30. Yeah. My house is 30 feet wide. Uh. And the rooms are 15 feet. So as big as my bedroom that I'm sitting in. Is, is 15 by 30. No, it's not even 15 by 30. It's 15 by 15, I guess. Yeah. My God, a pool has got to be big enough because that's what they got 15 by 32. But that's an observation. That's You're not asking them to make it smaller necessarily. But once it gives, it gives me an idea, since I'm sitting in it, what size yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, but so on the motion, you're okay with the motion to approve? Yeah, because okay. they, it's kind of edges, you'll never see it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, okay, thank you, Diane. Stephen? Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Yeah, uh, Val, thanks, that was a helpful link. Uh, Lindsay, can you just confirm that the, on the site plan, that the, bear with me a second, that the vegetation shown there is actually on the lot. Yes. Yeah, oh. So there's so there's the hedge. The, yeah, you the, know. Where, yeah. Yeah. So so yeah, we we uh, took the pictures from the road um, of the lot and everything. So like the lot's on a corner. So you've got a hedge that kind of wraps around it. Um, right. So on the bottom of the of, uh, Holly, would you scroll up just a hair more? There you go. So where it says proposed landscape plan left to right, if you follow that vegetative line from the street, Sankey Road to the rear corner, that's all on the property? That section, yeah, that, that's all on their property. Yeah, okay. and Thank they've you. got privet, I think it's a privet hedge actually that runs along between the two houses. It looks like it's between the, the lot, yeah. 
Yeah, it looks like it from the image. Okay, thank you. Okay, so you're in favor of the motion? Steve? Oh, I didn't hear, I'm sorry, I didn't hear a motion. Yeah, there was hey. a, yeah, Val made a motion. Oh, sorry. It, uh, and it was our usual caveat to be screened at the time of inspection and thereafter. Sure, okay, thank you. Yes, I'm in favor. In favor, okay, so Abby's in favor, not Abby, Val's in favor, Diane's in favor, Stephen's in favor, and the chair's in favor, so the motion carries. Thank you. All mm. right, thanks. Okay, uh, next up is uh, 8 Center Street, Sconset, with TJ. I believe TJ's been waiting so long. Thank you, that's me. Hello, TJ. Hello, TJ. Hey, what's up, Stephen? I didn't know you could grow hair. I like it. Yeah, I, I know. Just, I just had to stop shaving it. <laughs> okay, so TJ, what do we have going on? And it's it's a it's a revision to COA. We once had an approval to get uh, the AC condenser on the north side, protected by the basement areaway walking. Uh, railing, I mean, um, now we propose to move it under some windows on that back patio on the south side, which, okay. you know, I don't have good summertime photos to, that I submitted, but it is completely surrounded in brush. Um, and it, we're going to do a cedar enclosure natural to weather. Okay. Uh, to further limit the visibility. I do have comments from sponsor. Yes, board. Please, please, Holly. Thank you. Um, August 17th. Um, as you all are probably aware, this is probably one of the picturesque um, historic structures within Sconset, as far as near the, the center, um, the corners circa uh, 1790. And overall, there are concerns for um, this being noisy for the passerby or um, somebody that's in the square um, to see. Um, wanted to know, can it be seen from the pump square? That was one of the biggest questions. And if so, it would need to be obviously mitigated. Um, it's a very iconic spot. Um, previous location on the other side seemed to be more pre um, preferred. Just trying to find that spot. Um, I guess this is where the location is on the other side. This is where it was, was before. Right. Um, yeah. Wanted to know what type of plantings would be proposed to screen it. Um, uh, basically that the square is a public area. So that was the, the overall concern. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, as much as I think some of us would like to have jurisdiction over noise, we don't. Um, so it's really a visual thing. Oh, there it is, new condenser. So those are wintertime photos. Uh -huh. And I did, I did make a visit a few weeks ago that didn't take summertime photos. It's pretty well screened over there. Maybe if you zoom in, please, on the west West elevation photo. Um, you can see even on the south side of the fence there, there's some hydrangeas. And then there's that big uh, bush as well. Hey, so TJ, it seems like the only thing that's screening the view of that would be that tree that's outside of the fence. Is that true? Well, yeah, outside of the fence is um, the, the the flowers and brush, but we're proposing to build like a natural to weather cedar lattice enclosure around the unit as well. Oh, oh, I didn't see that. Inside of that fence? Yeah, I didn't really provide a detail for it, but I did call it out on the site plan. Yeah, okay. Uh, and how how high is this unit? Uh, those are usually about 32 inches to 36. So the way I'm looking at this is, you know, I'm my eyes are obviously taller than that fence, right? And I'm walking by and yes. I can look right over the fence and see, bop, 
the condenser if there's not something else like right next to it. Yeah. Um, in the winter time, you'll have a clear view of that area. So what we can do is, you know, do that cedar enclosure. And I think it's, we'll make it nice. You know, we can put a, a sloped uh, cover on it. And, oh. do the re and do the front of it as uh, permeable with lattice. Okay. Well, it's nice to know you could put a cover on it. That helps a lot. Yeah. All right. Fellow board members. I can make a suggestion. That would be great, Diane. Go for it. Uh, doctor who left, left here had a house on Shell Street and he had... Uh, Jock Lawrence Lawrence and um, he came to us and he had when he bought the house it had some sort of air conditioning fan on the on the side of the house that faced down to the uh, little store um, it we, he he didn't have room to put it up high or everything else he built as TJ said a lattice work had it with a sloped roof and went down. Um, you really couldn't see it. You couldn't see the air conditioning thing behind it. So it's worked out pretty well. I see it very often when we go out there. And um, it's worth, if somebody wanted to look at it, that's where it is, Shell Street. Or TJ came up with just about the same thing. So I think it will work. Oh, good. That's nice to hear, Diane. Thank you. Um, okay, Stephen. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think just given the location, I would like to ask for a detailed drawing that shows from the inside the fence, the lattice. I'm yeah. a little bit concerned, TJ, just because the, um, a lot of times with these units, you gotta have a ground clearance of like uh, 10 or 12 inches, uh, especially if it's a heat pump because of the snow. Mm -hmm. so, that that's that's my only concern, and I'm not suggesting it can't be addressed with lattice, but I think just out of diligence, it would be good to have that detail in the file because uh, you're going to give this to somebody to build, and then they're going to go do it. Um, so I think that's what I would ask for. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Val. I personally would like to view. Okay. Um, if possible, and then see some of those things that are around. Well, that's uh, so. Do we want to just do that? View and get some additional information from TJ. Yeah, yeah. I'll make a motion to view, and with further information. All right, more detail on the fencing and so forth from TJ. Yeah. Uh, the okay. lattice. What's that? The lattice. Just to be clear, that I was looking for a detail on the lattice view. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so that is uh, Diane's motion. So, uh, Stephen? Aye. Val? Aye. Diane? Aye. Thank you, and the chair's in favor. Motion carries. Okay, thank you, TJ. Nice seeing you. Thanks, Ray. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. Thanks, we'll TJ. All right. Okay, uh, so the last item on our new business agenda that was carried over is James Crowley 8 Wall Street. Wall Street. Now, I believe that this was going to go on consent, but a neighbor had expressed concern. And I wonder if, if the neighbor has voiced their concerns in some way, or perhaps they're um, on this Zoom session. Um, I never got an email from her. I did reach out for her and uh, it seemed as though we were going to get some something, but we never did. Okay. I so, think Kathy took it off just out of concern that someone had concerns. So here I thought someone had a concern about the shed, not the driveway. The shed we don't even have on oh, okay. this one, but they did have a concern over the driveway. But like I said, she did not end up sending us any sort of message for it. So Kathy took it off just to see what you guys had to say. So it's basically the drive as we see it, right? Yep. All right. Which is uh, an anomaly in Cisco. 
seems to be where where in Cisco is this? It's Wall Street. Oh. And this is a new house on a Yes. Uh, can you can, I'm sorry minister, can we see the site plan again? And something's occurring to me right now, which is this has two curb cuts, which we, well, actually the HCC doesn't have much to say about it, but the the, the uh, planning board is supposed to. Yes, be it will have to go in front of planning board as well. So um, I'm, I'm going to Google. Okay. And uh, this has two curb cuts and the house. Oh, oh. The one, one home closer to the ocean. I don't know which way the numbers go. I presume it's 10 actually has, I actually thought it was this house. Um, it has the exact same, con almost the same configuration, but without the uh, pull-in area. Hmm. Okay. This is down on Caroline Street. Um, I don't know what that crossroad is. Caroline. Caroline? Yeah. The um, long and short of this though is that there already is two curb cuts. There is, and there's three on the road of five houses. One, two. Yeah, but no, oh, I can't see it close enough. Google it. You know, the other thing about this is it's there's, a weird ball shape too. Yeah, there, but there's is this curbing that I'm looking at? Yeah, on a dirt road. Yeah, I know. It just seems very formal and heavy to me. I'm going to pull up the view pack. Who? Um, it wasn't in the view pack. But it's on the consents. Is that is that correct? That's correct. It was on consent, yes. OK, I'm going to pull it up and look at the drawings up close. I don't know if I can speak. I'm uh, representing the owner. OK, go ahead. Uh, th that, that drawing is deceptive. There is no uh, curving. It would just sorry. be a shell. Um, Paolo, sorry. Yeah. Uh, we're just going to give your name for the record. Yeah, sure. Paolo Vicent, the architect. Thank you. And I, 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 I don't know why that second line is in there, but there would be no curving. Okay, so no curve. Okay. And it's... It is, yeah. Okay. And there is existing two curb cuts. Um, if I was more technically advanced, I could share a Google image of you. So okay. let me ask you something too. Um, ordinarily, or maybe, maybe the uh, has the planning board backed off on the whole um, uh, apron thing out of town? We did. Go, we went to the planning board. They gave us a, this is grandfathered in. Yeah. Um, the, two, the two curb cuts already. It's been there for quite a time now. Okay. Uh, that wasn't actually my question. My question was oh. about whether you're going to have an apron or not. Chair, oh. yeah. they wouldn't need an apron on a dirt road. I'm pretty sure Wall Street. So, yeah, it used dirt. to be that they wanted an apron everywhere. And I always thought it was ridiculous to have an apron on a dirt road. And then I sort of heard that they had backed off on that. You're not allowed right. to have an apron on a dirt road by you're the planning board. Not allowed. Not allowed, not allowed because of oh. cavitation. Well, that's really good. That's good news. Okay, so board members, um, what do you think? I'd like to suggest that the drawing, if, if it's approved, the drawing be modified to eliminate what it, it appears to be a banding. The curb, uh, yeah. There's this curb, yeah, just for the, to avoid, uh, avoidance of any confusion. I totally agree to that, yeah, for sure. Is the stockade fence there now? Yes. Yes? You said yes. I don't remember a stockade fence. That's, right. all that's, that's not a stock. It's a uh, split rail fence. That's not, shouldn't be oh. stock. And, and I guess my other comment would be that the, the stockade fence be labeled split rail. Yeah. Well, and also be labeled as existing, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. Anything else? This house is no, but this house has been treated very casually in the last years of its growth. So you'll see stuff like that. 
Uh, motion to approve is submitted with the through staff with uh, changes as follows. Um, the stockade fence will be labeled existing split rail and the uh, banding which represents as curbing will be removed. Like it, thank you, Stephen. Diane. Aye. Thank you, Val. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Chairs in favor, motion carries. Thank you. Okay, that, that concludes our new business agenda for the evening, great. Now, um, hey, is Abby back? I texted her that we need her because um, you yeah. and I have to recuse. Well, let's see. Okay. Uh, well, we'll get right to old business. And the first, the first item on the old business, which I need to recuse from, is chaired by Stephen. Diane's on it. Oh, Abby's on it. And Jesse's on it. So, oh, Jesse's so we have a form. Right. Wait, but is Mr. That no. May I just suggest we um, motion to hold it till Abigail Camp's return? So is she coming back tonight? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah, Great. She'll be back shortly. Did Did I hear somebody say that they had texted her? I did. Okay. Thank you very much, Val. Okay. So just let me know. I'll just mute off and then go do my stuff. Yeah. Well, we're we're into this block of my generation energy stuff. Oh, now. here's Abby. Oh, Lisa. Perfect timing. Oh, so sorry, sorry. No, 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 it's okay. Timing is perfect. I'm gonna mute and Stephen, you're gonna be chairing this apparently. Okay, okay great. So uh, before we begin, I just wanna identify our board. Uh, Jesse, myself, Val, no, Val, you on this? No. Let me, forgive me. Uh, myself as acting chair, Diane Coombs, Abigail Camp, and Jesse Dutra. And then can I um, get a read, please, in an orderly fashion as possible, who's here to speak on this? I'm gonna call out names as I see them. Uh, let's see, Lisa, obviously representing the applicant. Uh, Linda Williams. Yes, here I'm representing the neighbors. Uh, Sarah Elger. I am with Lisa, representing the owner. Okay, uh, Steve Cohen. Other Steve, you there? Uh, Jim, no, Val, and Bill McGuire, no. Okay, so uh, Linda and Sarah. All right, great. So uh, Lisa, if you would please walk us through the changes, sure. then we will hear from uh, uh, Sarah if she wants to comment, and then Linda, and then we will take up the application. Okay, so hopefully this is the right set of drawings because we had submitted the, the wrong previously submitted drawings. So one of you emailed me. Yeah, I just emailed the right ones in. Can you, uh, Lisa, give us a key from the, the right set, for instance, a particular feature on a particular elevation? Uh, it would be on the south. Oh, oh the, yeah, See, this is the incorrect set, I can tell. Okay, the correct set is in our packet then. Uh, no, I emailed it this afternoon. And the only reason, I can pull it up. The only reason was because the the, the correct, Proposed set is in your package, but my staff had put the wrong previously submitted drawings on them. Because so at least I, I think the ones on the right is correct. Let me see. This page. Because you split the drawing. That is correct. But but the previously okay. sub, yeah, Lisa, that's the right set. I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt. I just want to keep it orderly. Uh, uh, Holly, can you relinquish relinquish the share? And Lisa, would you pull up yours? Stephen, this is correct. This is correct. This is correct. This is correct. Okay, great. Yeah, sorry. They're what were emailed to. She sent two PDFs yeah, this afternoon. This is the other one. That's correct. You had, I think the other one you had pulled up earlier, or maybe I missed. I didn't see the little addition that we added to the right. Okay, great. So with that, let's get her rolling. Okay, so on the west, um, we did a couple of things. We took five inches out of, we lowered the floor by five inches. We uh had already removed the shutters so that's not on this set we um added the single story shed roof element to the right i mean the gable roof element to the right because we're sort of tight on ground coverage i used it as a roof over the shower enclosure um with ice uh, yeah that, you want more ice? i wanted 
sorry. Okay, so that is that. Those are the changes that's seen on the west. If you want to go down to the south, which is probably the most visible, so we took that dormer and we actually broke it into two and reduced the number of windows. So it's a little bit, it's more cottagey, I think. It's uh, less obtrusive. We also added the shed and reproportioned it and moved one of the windows to the front so that it had more in keeping um, the proportion of what had been there before with the chimney. And right. again, we took out, so the height poles that you guys saw were actually you know, five to six inches taller than this ridge because I put them up based on the old drawings because I uh, met with the gentleman that erected them prior to us doing this submission. Okay. Um, and then the next, I don't think there were any changes other than the height on the east and on the, and again, on the um, north, there's no changes other than the height. Um, I did submit also some pictures of the height pole that I took when I was out there. Um, it's, it's, um, and the vegetation between on that road, on that dirt road as you walk up from the pond. And so you will see the top of the roof. Um, there's no question about it, but the vegetation is so heavy that you really only get glimpses of it um, until you actually get to the property line and you look, to, can look down the side. It's very heavily vegetated. Okay. Is, there picture, is there a picture, Mr. Chairman, through the chair of coming in on Quidnet Road, you know, straight in from the stop sign? These are going up the hill. That's our clients. No, but I thought I thought your client's concern, Linda, was um, the same. It is. Yeah. Oh, I just wondered if there was another picture. I didn't take a picture from there because I didn't think that that was a concern. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, Lisa, any other comments? And then I actually want to switch it up just to be clear. I'll, uh, I want to. Um, I don't believe so. I mean, I, I, I really feel like this is a well-designed uh, addition onto a, onto a cute cottage. It's not overwhelming to the neighborhood. It's in keeping with Quidnet. It's, it has some funky characteristics about it. Um, and I'm really pleased with the design and how it's come and have um, appreciated the comments we've gotten. And I think it has improved the design. So I'm hoping you all agree. Okay. Um, before we take further comments, I, I don't. I want to stay away from the kind of subjective opinions. And just if there's any members of the of the sitting board, if you have a particular question on the design elements, we're not reviewing making our comments at this point. We'll wait until we hear from the two others. But if there's a particular uh, question on what's been presented, I'd like to get that out of the way now, so that helps to limit back and forth. Any questions, anyone? Okay, so uh, Sarah, did you want to speak in continuation or are you going to follow up after Linda? I can, I can follow up after Linda. I think Lisa said it very well. I think the changes have been responsive to your concerns and I think what we're presenting is wholly appropriate for Quidnet. Okay, thank you. Uh, Linda, you're at bat. Okie dokie, can we go back to the west, <laughs> one above this one? Yeah, where Lisa through the chair, Lisa, where was that pole in relationship to this elevation? Uh, the pole in my photos is much is, is more accurate than the one that was erected because the pole in my pictures that I just showed you, he was holding it. So it's at the at the furthest end of the gable. The one that he erected was further in because he had to attach it to the house. All right, well, I'm just curious if looking at this elevation, was it on that right hand outside wall or was it at the ridge? No, 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 it was at the ridge height. It was at okay. the center of the ridge. So center of this, this element. Okay, and yeah, how many and feet- at the height above, of that element. How many feet above the existing ridge is that ridge? Uh, oh what? my goodness. Probably six feet, I would guess. Okay, and it's clipped. Okay, can we go down to the next one? Uh, my clients, were concerned because they saw the ridge pole and it seemed to be very high to them. I think we appreciate the fact that they have dropped the, uh, the floor plate, which lowered the overall height. Um, it's still a vertical wall. 
Um, what they'd also like to see is a shingled rail on the walk down and a shingled rail on that second floor deck, just on their side, just to match the one on the first floor. That's been consistent all along from them. But I think what they're concerned about is that it's still a fairly vertical wall, though it is dropped into the grade and the grade did not change um, after the original uh, proposal. Um, so I think what they, the dormers seem a little heavy. I, we appreciate thoroughly dropping that window out so it's not a triple and it's not one solid dormer. I understand why the left-hand dormer is there because of the height in the bathroom and um, which is upstairs in the master. But possibly the walls, that's, that's not an egress window for that bedroom, those two windows. Uh -huh. If they could bring the sides of the dormer in tight like the dormer on the left, that would even lessen the impact of that dormer if they can't set it back into the roof and run the eaves straight across, which is what we would prefer, as opposed to with that vertical wall there. So I still think they're concerned about the vertical wall and the height on that side as it appears coming up the hill when the vegetation is not there. And their vegetation, because when I took my pictures, it was nothing had grown back yet. It wasn't very green. Right now it's very green. But in the winter for you know nine months of the year, it's not very green. So that's their concern is really the south side facing them. But there's some things we can do to mitigate it. The shingle wall on those two rails, maybe bringing the dormer in tighter if they can't get them up on the roof and make them a shed dormer instead of flush dormer. So that's pretty much where they are right now. But they were concerned when they saw the hypo. Okay, thank you, Linda. Uh, sir, did you have additional comments or commission's gonna go now? I think the only thing I, I would object to is this characterization of the vertical wall. Um, I, I feel like the south elevation is completely appropriate, particularly with the changes that have been made. Okay, thank you. Um, Abby, you ready to go? Sure. Okay. Um, I was just wondering, when did the chimney get nixed? Did I miss? The chimney has always been on the left side. Um, Left side, meaning which elevation is that? The west. You can't, you mean you can't, so you don't see it from the south. You don't see it from the south. Oh, there it is, okay. Um, so, all right, good. And then I was wondering the shower door, I think it's on the south elevation. Could that be a shed dormer to go with the rest of the house instead of making it a gable? It could, I was just responding to, I think it was Jesse's comment. And I think, uh, you know, the uh, idea of showing that um, that single story shed that exists on the south now, they like the idea of mimicking that roof line. But I'm open to this it becoming a shed. I think it'd be quieter. Um, it's it's just kind of drawing attention to that elevation. And I think, first of all, I think you've done a great job um, keeping the character of this house. I, mm -hmm. I really, I do, I commend you. Um, and so, I think it was Linda said something about the overhangs. I don't know if she was, like, but anyway, I appreciate that you've kept that character of the house. Um, and other than that, I really don't, I think it's very sensitively done and I applaud your efforts. Thank you. Thank Great. you. Great. Uh, before I take other comments, uh, I wanted to get uh, Holly, did you have a comment? Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, thank you. As you all are aware, um, staff has been taking a look at this and based on the um, revisions, I just want to make a comment about that particular um, cover over the shower. I, I, I appreciate it and I'm, I'm glad Jesse brought it up um, at the, pre the previous meeting. I'm curious if the pitch of that gable shed would, would actually, if, it, if you could match the existing yeah, gable that is on the existing south elevation, I think that would give a nod to it and I'm I don't want to speak for Jesse, but that might have been what he was looking for. Um, that's totally that's, fine. That's would be my comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. Uh, thank you, Holly. Jesse? Uh, you're muted, Jess. There we go. I think I would have figured this out by now. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I appreciate Holly's comment, and I think that uh, uh, that makes sense. And, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm, I, I would prefer it not to be a shed dormer to try to carry back, you know, a little bit of the, uh, the original building. Um, and, 
in, in I, but I understand you know, Abby's comment and I'd like to see it somehow more, but I don't really have an exact uh, um, idea for that. Um, <clears throat> but I think it adds to the quirkiness of a, um, you know, of, of the area, uh, just having that doghouse there. Um, now that's an outdoor shower. Is there any way we could, instead of those uh, vertical panels, is there any way we could add shingle there? Yeah, would that, I, I think so. I just have to be careful about it becoming ground cover. Right. Um, and then, and then Holly's comment on the pitch. And then dimensionally, I'm, I, it's it's hard to say exactly if this is, is if that uh, doghouse um, portion dimensionally. Um, um, including the, the roof pitch width and height. Is that pretty close to what the original? I, I think it's pretty close, but I could double check that and certainly make it that if that's a concern. Yeah, and then, and, and then to add to that, I know we're dealing with a second story element versus a first story element, but in, 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 you know, in general, we don't like to make things bigger, but if, 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 if we could get that, that point of the, of the doghouse close Ridge line, I think it would carry back closer to the original silhouette. Um, and then on top of that, um, maybe tucking it to the right. So you see how in the original silhouette that it's kind of hugged against the window there. Yeah, it can move to the right. Yeah. Yeah. So those are just some suggestions. I, 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 I don't know how easy those are to do, but uh, and I think that would help uh, it giving it a throwback to the the original um, uh, silhouette of the uh, of the building and add to the quirkiness of putting it. Uh, other than that, I'm okay with the application. Thanks. Thank you, Jesse. Diane? Uh, I like the way the building has come out. The, the uh, I think that it would be interesting to see that shower door shingle. It's funny how it sort of sticks out. I don't know mm -hmm. why, but it catches your eye as you, as you look at the thing. Can we see further down? I've got the south and I can't move it to anything else. That's that's good. I think it will fit in very nicely. Um, the, the east will be sort of facing uh, Sackage Pond in the long run. Um, hard no, to see. Ocean. I'm surprised to see, seeing your photographs of the, the vegetation coming up that little road. It looks it's certainly grown up a lot and that's good. So I think it will be good. Um, I uh, think you worked in that lower floor basement, I guess. And I don't mind those vertical boards on the front of the elevation, east elevation. So. I think you answered a lot of my questions on these revisions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Diane. All right, so let me just pull okay. this up here. All right, so I think uh, I appreciate the changes. I believe that the uh, I am good with the concept of changing the roof pitch on that gable perhaps extending it another foot or two back towards the rear or sliding the whole unit back towards the rear foot towards that window, I don't think would hurt. Uh, the, I do agree. I think just as a, a element that the balustrade, the open balustrade, uh, not so, maybe not on the first floor. I'm a little concerned about enclosing that space and uh, into the basement and uh, it's not our purview, but the idea of, of not having air and light ventilation there. But on the second floor on the south elevation, having that be a, a shingle wall rail, uh, I do not believe that needs to extend down to the east. 
and clearly it dies into the, uh, the wall and the roof plane towards the north, so there's no change there. Um, so I think other than that, it's, let me just make sure, uh, Jesse, if I miss something, please let me know. The idea here is that the, on the south elevation, uh, that roof pitch would change or the small gable, uh, perhaps move it a little bit to the right or uh, make it a little wider. Uh, the south elevation on the second floor shingle wall on that rail. And there seemed to me what there was one other comment Jesse had made and I apologize for missing it. Um, again, I, I, it's hard for me to uh, you know, be the architect Bill, but I was talking about how the, the peak of the uh, dog uh, uh, house, um, if it was closer to the ridge line of the, um, of the roof. Oh, yeah, so taller, Jesse? You're suggesting it's being taller? Taller, but again, I, you know, it may, mm -hmm. it may make I, it out of scale. Yeah, like, I think so. It might look like yeah. a rocket. Yeah, and yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, you're trying to you're trying to mimic a first floor to a second floor, and I don't think that really yeah. works. But yeah, that was that was my other comment, anyways. Okay, thank you. So, what do you guys want to do with this? You think we could do staff approval? Pass it. You want to pass it, uh, Diane? Are you okay with making modifications through staff at this point? Yep. Yes. Um, can I get a motion then? Uh, well, did, um, I'm not sure about the pitch. I think if we're not going to, I think we should probably just leave the pitch as is on the shower. Would that be okay if I put an approval that way? Or, or you can just say to match the existing um, mass. I think we all know which mass we're referring to. I can just confirm that it matches that. Okay. The south elevation? Yeah, the existing the, south the elevation. The old south elevation. Okay, yeah. so motion to approve making the roof of the shower match the existing south elevation. Uh, Bump out? Gable, whatever it is. Roof, roof configuration. Okay, and um, anything on the rail on that south elevation on the second floor? Did you want that shingled? I think so. Okay, um, I'll add that to my approval. And um, I think that, oh, and the uh, vertical uh, on the shower from the... Oh, uh, it's, yeah, I didn't quite understand that comment. Where are the shingles going? So uh, I believe that the comment was, if we're looking at the west elevation, that the idea of, of trying to limit or eliminate the perception of the vertical boards is more in keeping with the existing structure kind of bump out. Um, on the west or on the south? I'm sorry, I thought it was on the south. He wanted to see the shingled wall. I think no. on the west because the south won't this be south. visible. Really? Okay, the west is fine. Um, you have and, to be careful with that, Mr. Chairman. Just be careful from a zoning point of view. If the yeah. wall gets if the wall gets too tall compared to that roof. And you start monkeying around with maybe shingles, they may consider that ground cover because there's only so much you can do to surround something under a roof before it becomes a certain percentage and it becomes ground cover. Sure, so yes. Yeah. You don't want to have a covered careful. porch. You don't want to have a covered porch there. Should um, we just leave it as is then? Yeah, because the suggestion right. I would make would just make it more complicated. So Okay, okay. So just, just just the the gable, just the gable itself to mimic the south south existing south elevation and fill in the shingle, the second floor, balcony on the south, not the south elevation, is the east, Lisa, where is that? Oh, it's the south. South. The side of the south on the second, second floor. Second floor rail south yeah. elevation. Okay, that's my motion. That's your motion. Okay, great. Uh, Jesse on the motion. Aye. Diane on the motion. Aye. Abby on the motion. Aye. And uh, myself and then I. Um, thank you uh, everyone thank you for so working with us on this. Really thank appreciate you it. all the time you guys spent. And on that, uh, with that, I give back the chairmanship. <laughs> okay. Thank you. thank you. Okay, so now we have our block of eight applications for five Sun Island Road. Uh, Linda, are you representing this? Yep. Okay. Hold on.
What? Hold on. I got to turn my thing on here. Okay. Yes, I am. Yeah. I'm here. Okay. Um, so the board on this, let me make sure they're all the same. I think they are. Okay. So the board on these eight applications is going to be myself, Diane, Abby, Val, and Stephen. Um, we do have Jesse down as an alternate, but we do have the, those five members are all present, at least at the moment and sitting. So we'll move forward with that. Okay, so uh, are you ready, Linda? Yep. Yes, we're supposed to be reviewing building A. We'll do all five of those together, A, B, C, D, oh, they're yeah, all the same. Yeah, yeah but the, the, you'll recall that there was some confusion at last, uh, whatever the last meeting was about the, the yeah. uh, labeling, you know. Can I speak this is the that? new plan. Yeah, so Stephen, go. This is the new plan. Yeah. So um, I just wanna say, I appreciate the applicant followed up, the applicant's agent provided some clarity uh, with respect to what what applications pertain to what, and um, it was very helpful when I viewed it. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that, Stephen. Okay, uh, Linda, continue. Sorry. Um, I think you're all pretty familiar with it by now. Hopefully, everybody got out there. Um, these are minimally visible at all, and they are the same color as the metal roof that are on these five. It's almost a flat roof. These are flat. They're about maybe two or three inches off the roof. And they are metal colored like the metal roof. I didn't even know they came in that color. So that's pretty much it. Because if you if you look at it from uh, Sun Island, there are pictures, but you don't have to go back there again. If you look at it from Sun Island, there's a liner building that blocks them that's taller than they are. If you look at it for coming in from Nobody or Farm, you can't see them because there's multiple houses in another building and another liner building in between them and uh, Nobody or Farm Road. And the years of minimal visibility from um, Hinsdale on the south uh, because they are flat. And there's a liner building down there. So you can barely get a little corner of it there. Hey, Linda. Yep. Uh, uh, Holly, I think you, you're, you're controlling. It's not a different one here, but well, these so are the buildings that we're talking about right now. If we back up a bit. There was a roof that was, uh, there we go. Okay. That's not so this building. No, but why is that circled? Because this is part of oh. the other, I don't know why they're in this particular grouping. This is part of the other application. This is the second application, not part of those five buildings. There's a okay. several pictures in here of those other buildings. All right, well then I'm oh. gonna get out of that one. Yeah, this is not the right thing. That's just a letter um, saying, that they have been in contact with Lauren Sinatra, our energy yeah. person. This is this addresses the uh, FAA has already been contacted. They're fine. Mm -hmm. The um, they've been in contact. I put Lauren together with the um, solar company, and they are talking about various options. What is clear is that the power cannot leave the island. Whatever form it takes, it has to stay on the island. There are other programs that may be beneficial to um, homeowners here and the solar company that they are all exploring and they're talking about right now. Okay, Linda, I appreciate that. And I think everybody on the board will appreciate that the power stays here. It's not our purview, but it's just nice to know. You know, where the power goes is not really our, that's not part of our thing, but, but thank you. I'm sick of hearing that. <laughs> Well, that's the okay, that's and the last time I'll ever family. say it, Diane. I will never say what? it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but 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 Diane, Linda just said that the power will stay on the island, so it has know. to legally stay here. It can't legally go into the grid on the mainland. It must, by law, stay here. They've had mul there it is. They've had multiple conversations with Ngrid, and um, they're in a process of having an agreement with NGRIB. Now, whether it goes to the municipal buildings or the area houses um, is what they're talking to Lauren Sinatra about. Okay, but so the long and short of this is that it stays. Yep. Good to know. And okay. there are no outside, oh, the other question was, there are no outside batteries. 
their direct feed. So there's no extra equipment. I believe Val asked about that. Okay. No transformers, none of that. This is a pretty new uh, system. I personally, all the years I was on the board, never saw this system before. Um, yeah, there they are. For some reason, oh, no, Val is on this. I'm sorry. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And I'm actually in the property here, nothing you can do, but you can see where the road is to the right. And then that liner building was going to have power, but they don't now. They're just the liner buildings. And you can see where the car is on the road. Okay. So you won't see property. it from Sun Island Road? Is that correct? You can't see those from Sun Island Road because of that, that liner building right there. Yeah, gotcha. And the pictures I've taken of the buildings, I'm actually on their property, which you can't go on. Okay. Right. And that's from Sun Island. And this is from inside the property. So you can see there's a panel right there. But you can't even see it. Jeez, wow. There it is, close yeah. up. Yeah, okay. okay. Hey, Linda. Uh, never mind. <laughs> um, I was, just, can I go? Sure can, Abby, go ahead. Well, um, so, I'm really glad to hear that it's staying on the island. Um, but I was wondering, you know, with obviously someone's going to make money off this. You think that we could maybe, maybe the word is beautify the the area. So I've noticed that on those orange buildings, there are some uh, pitch pines and some, uh, you know, other trees. See, yeah, it's like every once in a while you see, <clears throat> oh, right, like right there like right there and i'm just wondering you know it's always been a bit of an eyesore might be an opportunity since if we're allowing them to do this why not give some a little bit more back to that neighborhood and um put up some vegetation up you know some some of the natural like screening of those mm -hmm. buildings can I respond to that, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. The chair. You can, Linda. Um, they don't own the buildings. Sun Island owns the buildings, and the buildings themselves are not before the HDC right now, and they are as they were when they were originally approved, unfortunately, but there they are. And um, so they're not in charge of any of the screening. Sun Trent Island is not in charge of any further screening. And because they are blocked from a public road, except for that 20-foot space there, that should have been taken up when we approved these things to begin with so many years ago. But it is what it is. I hate to use, I really hate to use that phrase. We're hearing it way too often lately. It is what it is, Linda. I hate that phrase. I missed it. What is it? It is what it is. Oh. You just said you'd never <laughs> say it again. I can't stand it, but it is what it is. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, that was a nice suggestion of mine. I guess it got, I don't know. Well, also, Abby, that Hinsdale Road on both sides, you can see it on the south side of that road, is all industrial. Yes. So really yeah. Not hiding it from well, that's another reasons. reason to just. It's too late. <laughs> yeah. I think well, the horse left the barn. Okay. Um, well, Abby, do you have more that you would like to say on this? No. Okay. I, I did. I did appreciate that that comment though, that was, that was good. Um, Diane? Yes, I, I mean, we can't vote against the buildings now, as long as they have that uh, agreement with, with the uh, electric company. What I do, I guess this would be the time to put it in. Perhaps we should review our solar policy and include in the second go, go around commercial buildings so that we don't end up having the whole area of, of Nobadia Farm Road over to the airport fence and up and down there, all solar panels. I, I think we need to know what we're dealing with and I think what we've seen the beginning of it with the A, B, C, D, E, and A and B of, of 5A, uh, 
but I think it's something I would like to say, I think it's something we have to consider very soon as, as to how approved is so that the only setup we have is for uh, residential buildings and it's time to get our feet in going and, and look at the commercial also. That's all. I. Okay. Well, you know that's that's a little complicated, and I'm kind of I'm pretty sure that I'm correct when I say that. Like I was just out to Tomahawk. Yeah, there are three there. You know, which is all commercial, and there's solar panels out there. So you know whether it's commercial or residential, I'm not sure. It, and I know Diane, I know you hate it when I say stuff like this, but but. It's like making the distinction between like- I'll, I'll we'll, we'll, you. Go ahead, Diane. No, I just, I think that maybe the people who live out there um, might be considered. I just think if all that area out there becomes commercial, these solar panels, that isn't bad, but it just should be controlled in some way that it it's not the whole smear. There's nothing that Nantucket has that the, that huge an area is all one money-making facility. Uh, I just hate to see that much land giving given up to solar panels, which are fairly obvious, whether you can see them at one time, you can see them up flying, whatever. It's just a consideration that we should look yeah. at, I, I hope, in the future. Yeah. And if you're, Diane, in all due respect, if you're going to have solar panels and, and of these, this magnitude on the two big buildings down in Tomahawk and to the right on this map, you can see Toscana's building and they're yeah. covered with them. If you're going to have solar panels in an industrial area, that will take some of the glut off the, the end grid um, cable because these buildings use an inordinate amount of power is it would be in an industrial area for uh, solar panels. Um, if they proliferate on a on Amelia Drive or if they proliferate on you know Bartlett Road, that's an indifferent issue. Those are also commercial areas. But this is an industrial area sunken down right. into the pit. And it's, you can't get away from the fact that the whole area, the pit in this area on Hinsdale is all commercial, and they take all, and they take an order. No, I know that. I'm just surprised that the buildings that are there existing use up as much electricity to run as you're mentioning. I have, I just, I have no problem with what they've got. They've got good roofs. They've done everything they should, and whatever. It's just the amount of them. I guess that's. Oh, which I learned to deal with. Well, it's new. Well, and thank you, and though. Fortunately, it's like basically invisible. You know, that's, <laughs> that's the one great thing about this proposal is is how uh, discreet it is and off the beaten path. Um, thank you, Diane. So, um, can I ask a question? Sorry, I yeah, I, I, I'm, I meant to to ask. My first question was I forgot where it is. Who stands to make money off this? Well, any solar company makes money off of it, yeah. but there is a benefit to the town or to Engrid users if they entered into a particular agreement that Lauren Sinatra has suggested. So they're all in early, early talks about this. But anybody putting up solar anywhere, whether it's Toby or Ian or any of the other guys, they're all making money off putting it up. So it's a so question they, of where the power goes. So just briefly, so let's say we okay this and they're collecting all this solar energy and it's going into some battery somewhere or something who who how do the who do they who is actually selling it to the town the sun generation or whatever they're called or who my generation they are making their profit from purveying it they're obviously making a profit for putting it up um, I assume they're going to make a profit so many so many cents on the kilowatt or some such thing, but there are benefits. There are benefit programs that benefit them financially, 
and benefit the town and Engrid and the users. So it's it's a complicated formula. I don't. I'm not well versed in that. Yeah, yeah you know, the only thing that uh, um, is holding me back is this: is the maybe with the town. Like, how do we know if we okay this that it's actually going to go to the town to be used by the town? I mean, look. I don't like I can't, the maybe. I can't even talk about that because it's not in the HCC's purview. Right. And I'm not as well versed in the, the financial uh, benefits of this. I just know the power has to stay here. Now, whether they sell it to the town and grid, there are benefits goes into the directly into the area residents that was suggested the other day by Lauren. So there's a, there's a number of ways for this to do it, but it has to stay here. Right. Well, you can see why we're, we would want, we would, um, you know what we, we could you can see why we sort of question it yeah i do but i got to stick with the architectural part of this right and for myself anyway holly yes sir holly. um i just wanted to um emphasize that i i, I did briefly please speak to lauren sinatra our energy coordinator this afternoon for a couple minutes on this and a you all know that again the purview is the architectural elements um, but B, she assured me, like Linda had mentioned, that it would stay on the, on the island um, and not all through um, and grid. And I, I think that we need to look at that as a, yes, it's not your purview, but at the same time, that's a benefit to the island overall. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And I don't think this will be the last one of these um, commercial installations that we see. I know there's one, another one out there that's being talked about. Um, maybe the town will put one up again and maybe they'll talk about it at the dump. But I think this is sort of the wave of the future of these large banks that are gonna be shipped into the Nantucket end grid part of this, which hopefully will alleviate the necessity for that third cable. Okay, so there's two, Excluding me, there's two members that have not yet spoken. Uh, they are Stephen and Val, and I'd like to hear from them as well. Val, you ready? I think uh, she's you might be muted. Yeah, okay. So, uh, Val, you ready? Go ahead. Okay, so I just wanna say something because I think Look, it's terribly important that everyone's doing the right thing for the right reasons. Um, personal property rights aside for the moment, I think this concept of talking about whether something is good for the island in terms of electrical use, whether it saves us from the third cord, whether it does these other things, I just wanna caution everyone, it's a double-edged sword. If we're, if we're considering those things, even as background elements in an, in an application, then we, in fairness, need to sit and listen to people who come in on an individual application and say, well, this will help cut down the cord. Oh, well, it'll help me with my savings. I, I, it's not that I'm suggesting we not have a heart because these are all important issues. But if we listen to those types of things on a regular basis, we're never gonna get through our workload. We have a ton left from last week. So I think it was important to say that. You can believe me, agree with me, I apologize if you don't, but I, I think it's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, the second concept or the second concept I'd like to address is I believe that with this particular application, the bank size obviously is a concern, but it's fully mitigated in my eyes because this is essentially uh, not visible. There are going to be some locations where you are going to see it from, I think, primarily Hinsdale, where the vegetation is open. Uh, Abby's point would have addressed that, but Hinsdale is primarily commercial. Um, and uh, the reason I mentioned that is not only relevant to this application, but I do agree with Linda's comments that there is, uh, you know, this is probably the future direction with commercial properties is to aggregate panels. However, um, and this speaks to Diane's concern, we have guidelines, and whether they're for residential or commercial, I think they're not specifically stated for commercial. However, we have, a, I believe, a wide latitude to adopt the principles that are included there. Um, and in particular, that panels not be on a primary structure and they not be in a highly visible location. So for future applications, for me, the fact that we've approved this, if we approve it, does not 
give some give set a precedent for people just to be coming in and putting these putting panels on you know eight ten twelve ten pitch roofs that face a road um and i think it's important to be clear about that so i'm gonna jump down from my little pedestal and uh, pass the baton thank you mr chair I, i'm not sure that i got from that whether you are okay with the architectural merits of this uh, yeah because it's because it's not visible yeah. or oh. it's highly highly limited visibility okay all right, thanks. Uh, Val, you're up. I've got nothing. Uh, I've, got I've nothing. got nothing positive to say about it. I have to vote on it because it fits with our guidelines, but. Okay, it. All right. fair enough. Um, well, Listen. Can you take all the five of those together so it's not you don't have to waste time on each each one of them A B C D No and no no I I think yes I think we're all eager to do to move along so uh, okay I'm in, I'm in the camp of these aren't visible and if these happen well not part of the HCC's purview, but I happen to believe in the whole concept of alternative energy when it works. And this seems to, because it's in a location that's, uh, you know, not, not that uh, traveled and, uh, you know, seen and all that kind of thing. So if it has to happen somewhere, I think happening here is not so bad. So I'm in favor of this application. Um, and if, for the purposes of moving this along uh, on your queue there, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. Yes. Uh, that would be to approve uh, five Sun Island Road A through E and five A and five B Sun Island Road due to severely limited visibility. Okay, you got almost all of them. Was there anything having to do with item number nine, roof? Uh, building? Did, yeah, I didn't think we talked about that one. If it's you completely different. Oh, it it's is right next to the Tuscana building with the solar panels on it. Okay, well, listen. Okay, so I'm going to nine by itself then. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. So, essentially, Stephen has made a motion to approve items two through eight on our agenda for old business. I can't find my agenda. No, it's, trust me. Is that the five, the five there and the two on the uh, five A Sun Island? One, two, yeah, three, Linda, I named them, so there, that's what the motion is, all the, all the fives. And okay. The okay. All right, so on Stephen's motion, Abby. Aye. Thank you. Diane. Mute. That's Tell okay. Uh, Aye. Oh, there's Diane. Okay, thank you, Diane. Uh, Val? I'm a no. Okay. Stephen? I'm a yes. Okay, and then the chair is in favor. So the motion carries one, two, three, four to, four to one. Four in favor, one opposed. Okay. Thank you. That's that. Now let's just discuss this item number, number nine. nine for a moment. No, I thought it was uh... old business number nine. Somebody just said that 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 is different for some reason. No, right, stop right there. What? You see that building to the left? That is Toscana's building. Yeah. You see the panels up there? The building to the right. Yeah. Is our building. Yes. And it's very, it's almost identical to the building at 5A, only a little bit shorter, you know, not as long. See, it's not as long, but you just proved 5B. So we're just asking for it to go to that building because that building actually looks at Toscana's building and hey, it looks hey. at the two big buildings that are in Tomahawk right below it. Okay, so so um, Linda? Yep. The photograph that you just showed us, where is Toscana's building in relation to this? Right there. No, 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 it, on the on the um, aerial the photo. Plant, right there, to the right. Oh, okay, all right, yeah. And we're right here. Now see, the panels are on the 
South side. Obviously the South side. Are you doing them on the North and the South on yours? Yeah, because the North isn't visible. So well, and also it's so flat that you probably get solar gain on the North. Yeah, side. we get solar gain from the whole roof. Okay. But it would match everybody. It would match the one to the left you just approved. It would match Toscana because I believe okay. Steve went and looked at, at so Toscana's. Stephen, I'm going to ask a question of you. Is yeah. there a reason that you isolated this one? Yeah, actually there is, but it's the wrong one. So um, yeah, five five A was the one that was different. I yeah, think. I natural I naturally uh, and that one you can't see from the uh, Hinsdale. Yeah. So um, I, I am, I j I'll just speak on nine. Thank you, Val. I wish you would have piped up a few minutes ago. Um, <laughs> nine Stone Island uh, I have, uh, is not gonna be visible or it'll be limited visibility due to the roof finish. Uh, yeah, and then Hinsdale sort of dies out up there. Okay, yeah. hang on, Linda. So are, are we gonna re ready to move forward with this one? Yeah, I would make a motion to approve subject to limited visibility. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Diane. Uh, aye. Here we go. Okay, thank you. Abby. Aye. Val. I'll be consistent. No. <laughs> I figured you would be, Stephen. Aye. Chairs in favor, motion carries, four in favor, one opposed. Did I get everybody on that one? Yep. I Thank did. you very much, guys. Okay, thanks. It'll be interesting to see how this works out. Ah, interesting. You don't want to be interested. You just don't want to see it. Solar industry um, we get. Okay, so listen, moving right along, we're now at the 32 Dukes Road. And uh, I guess I must have missed this one because Diane is, is chairing this one and then the one that follows it, okay? So I'm gonna mute. Okay, Diane, Madam Chair. Yeah, yeah, Thank you. yeah. Thank you, okay. Did well. So the board is uh, Val Oliver, Stephen Wells, Jesse Dutra, hopefully he's here, and me as- uh, I'm here. Chairmanship and the uh, next one, 42 Dukes Road, is Camp Oliver Welch and me. So we'll start 32 Dukes Road, and I have Atlantic Landscaping. Is Who's going to do that? Lindsay, I'm here. Uh, uh, Lindsay. Yeah. Hey. So... At the last meeting, um, the board requested that we stake it out and, and put, you know, red tape so that you guys could see visibility from uh, from the road, which we did. Um, and then we uh, we also provided, you know, sections so that you could also see how it relates, um, you know, because obviously the, the neighbor behind is the one where with the big wall and I know there's a lot of concern in that area. So um, but I think what we're what we're requesting is, you know, just really to help mitigate that slope um, and and help handle that change of grade so that the whole thing's not just sloping into the into the pool area. And we feel like having a retaining wall there is going to help minimize it, and then we'll be able to put, you know, some drainage behind there and help carry the water um, away. And it'll also help plant with our planting, you know, to help kind of screen the house behind us, the walls behind us. Okay. Uh, let me ask you, uh, because for one reason or another, I have not been able to get out there. Uh, it looks good, Madam Chair. In relation to what? It looks good. I went and looked at what? it. Me too. Okay. All right. Then I won't bother to ask my question. No, no, I so, didn't. Uh, <laughs> Is that your yeah. house, Lindsay? Okay. No, my, my kids are not here. I can honestly say that's not my house. <laughs> now, if you heard chicken, so, sorry, that's me. Jesse, on. <laughs> Jesse, are you on or not? He's just yeah, I'm sorry. There's a lot of background noise. Um, that's all right. Do you remember this 32 yeah. Dukes Road? Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Um, 
So, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, the elevation lines, I don't see any. I, I just want to make sure we're not, you know, getting the. Uh, I want to make sure we're not getting, um, you know, the. We're talking about a 30 inch wall and I'm looking at the elevation lines, but I don't see the actual numbers. Uh, there's can, you, a, can you help me out here? Yeah, there's uh, right. behind it. But so the, the, the house up top, um, you know, it's the, the one with the big wall. So it slopes down at almost six feet down to to our pool area. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to help mitigate that slope. Um, okay. And just to kind of help, like, not, not, we're not going to retain it perfectly level because it's still going to, it's going to slope in like this, but it just, by having that wall, it'll help it go a little more like this. So we can, you know, get some plantings and help kind of screen out that house behind us. Um, gotcha. So the, the, I, I see the 26 line. Okay. That's on the upper side of the wall. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we, and then your, your where's what your, What's your, your patio our, elevation our, line? Our patio elevation is uh, 22.5. And then, so our top of wall is going to be uh, 20. Well, so it'll be 28, but we're not, we're catching the, the grade on the right hand side. Okay. Holly, wait, wait uh, one sec. 22. So, sorry, I don't have it in front of me. It's 22.5 is our elevation at the bottom of the patio. So two and a half feet above that. In the upper left, Holly, would you mind uh, scrolling into the upper left corner of the page? There's a uh, section with, yeah, that's. Yeah, so you, you, yeah, you can see it. Yeah, in the upper left corner. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Holly. Oh, I guess it's not zooming. No, oh, there okay. we go. So you can see how we're trying to just okay. make that slope so that we can get trees grown on it. That's yeah, what no. was happening on the upper one. Yeah, but, but that's why we're doing this because the upper one, I mean, like it's well, way there and the walls are like so in your face that we have to do something to kind of help shield them a little bit. Because if, if you take that pitch all the way down to the, to the um, to the pool, all that runoff is going to run right into, into the pool area. I think, you know, we've got to have this wall there with some drainage behind it so we can capture some of that water before it down the slope. And plus, we need an area to plant on. Because I think that every, it, it benefits everyone if we help hide that big wall behind us. It helps absolutely property and it helps Duke's Road. And I think it's mutually beneficial. It's not going to run off to the kid next door, is it? No, we we'll capture all of our all of our water on our own property. We've got a drainage. We'll put some drainage in there. Um, Holly, thank sorry, you. Could, thank you. Holly, could you zoom back Excuse into the? Excuse uh, me. Sorry. Uh, you walk all over me. I'm going to shut it down. What are you waiting for, Jesse? Uh, I just want to make sure I understand the elevation. Sorry, I'm not looking at a computer, so it's a little harder. So, um, so yeah. Uh, and, our top uh, of the wall is 25.5. Our, our patio is is 22.7-ish. Uh, um, I think it's 22.7. Um, so, you know, we're sloping. You've got a 28 you know, at the neighbors, you got 28 and 29 kind of running all the way up that slope. Um, so we're trying to mitigate. It's, it's mainly in that corner that we're trying to mitigate. Oh, okay. I got, I got the numbers now. I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, it's just taking me, it's, it, it, they're kind of tucked in behind the plants. Yeah. Sorry about that. So 20. All right, I'm looking at line 24. So there's 25.5, that's our top of wall. And then if you track back from there up the slope. Two. Okay, I just wanted to make, yeah. Okay, I, I got it, sorry. I just want to make the, sure the overlay 
overlaid elevations matched the elevation of the wall with all the scrutiny that's okay. going on. I just want to make sure. So we're, it, it, it matches. So close enough anyways. So we're good. Sorry, Lindsay, Thank I just you. want to make sure. That's all right. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, Abby. Yeah. Um, you want I, to go? Sure. Am I? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with this. And also, I, I heard that Steve and Val said they had gone by and that they thought it was okay. So I feel confident in being all right as well. Okay. Val. I would motion to approve it as submitted. All right. Stephen, do, do you have something you'd like to say first? Uh, I. That's a good thing. Abby. I. Okay. And Jesse. I. Thou. I. All righty. And. I've, okay, so that's all of us. And Great. the next is forty. Thank you. Next is forty-two. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There you go, Lindsay. The next one is forty-two Dukes Road, and that is Abby Camp, Val Alva, Stephen Welch, um. I don't have anybody recused and I don't have any alternates. So we will start with that. Who is to, who is informing us on 42 Dukes Road? Uh, Bill McGuire, who, if you, who? can you hear me? Can, can, can you guys hear me? I can hear you. I can okay. hear you. Um, so we were asked to, um, and as in the last application, we were asked to put up the red tape. And so we did that. And we also put in um, four temporary um, cedar trees to give an indication of what it will, you know, what it'll look like. There is going to be more of those, but we only had four that we could put in there. And so the, uh, we think that once those trees grow up that you know, even with these as they're as short as they are, um, disguise the entire pool area. And then once we add more to the left and, and another uh, two or three going toward the uh, little shed in the back, that's going to take out any visibility of the wall. Okay. Uh, when we're looking down the driveway now with the garage two doors that yes. you see on the right, <clears throat> the yes, pool the is going to go in front of that little building. Well, the pool goes to the right of that yeah. little shed behind the guest house. So it was okay. only this corner that's behind the two uh, trees to the right there that would be the only visible part with, if those weren't there, but they're... Uh, they're in, and you can see at the top of that slope, those are the size of the cedar trees when they grow up. So oh, it, okay, because you don't have a big area the and it's up above. What? Could we see the, oh, thank you. what do you want to see, Ab? Uh, the site plan, it, it's sort of similar to um, the one before, the application before, in that we want to screen it from the road. It's sort of the same right. setup. So um, I think on the one before, I just want to make sure that there's that corner still worries me. And I wonder if we couldn't do some screening right at that corner, like small bushes or something. I don't want to see like from the road that, that that angle look right in just where the steps are something there vegetation okay yeah right right between the pool and the steps that whole area i'd like to see uh towards the pool actually um 
I'd like to see some sort of screening there, vegetation. Yes, that, that's yeah, fine. It's a, it's a direct view right back down there, isn't it? Yeah, you don't want to see people walking around in bathing suits and, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just not done. <laughs> okay. Val. Um, I did go out there too. I have some grave concerns about this, um, mostly because having seen it in person, this stone is so unusual and such a different type of wall material and there's already so much of it. Um, I hesitate to say, go ahead and put vast amounts more. I wish almost there was some kind of screening that could be on the walls that are really more evident toward the road. Um, it's just really different. The, it's the not the field stone. It's not field stone. Walls, what are the walls made of? I don't know what it is, but it's different. I think it's stone pressed in concrete or something. <clears throat> like a facade. Bill. Yes. Bill, what is it? Well, I I believe it's a like a cut ash layer. Um it's 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 more squared stone than it is rounded, like <clears throat> you know, like the other application had, the, the one just before us. Um, but the on the if you're looking down the driveway, the the tall wall to the left actually has a foot uh, curb in front of it. Yeah, with has, little tiny plants. <laughs> yeah, has has planting in there, and the the ones that they had on there going up the wall had died, so those were what was left. But there's going to be planting more in there that was supposed to climb up the wall to to um, help mitigate that height of that wall. The original house when Are it was those built, real stone. Yes, they are. They are real stone. They're just. Bill, um, are those? I'm sorry, Diane. Go ahead. Cut. No, I just wanted to make sure they were real stones. Oh yes, it, it's and all not real stone. Some it's stone just... facing. That's it. Okay. So Val, what would you like to see? Uh, less stone, but. <laughs> Uh, I have a suggestion. Okay. Um, as you go up those stairs, oh wait. Can I go, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Go yes, ahead. Stephen, you yeah. go. Yeah, just because there's there's an element. Holly, can you zoom in on the um, area at the head of the drive towards the area that's being proposed to have wall? So. Basically, you see that kind of herringbone in the plan at the driveway. So I guess just zoom in on the center of the page. Yeah. Okay, so I think the thing to be clear about here, which isn't being made clear, is from the drawings we have, um, can you, if I mark this up, do you guys see it? Did you just do red? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, that is that is the area, I, and I'll ask Bill for clarification, but that's the area I believe needs to be planted because the way I'm reading it, this is the face of the, this area is the wall. So if we put plant material back right. here, all we're doing is putting it on top of a wall. So what we really want to be doing at minimum is having plant material across the front of this that completely blocks any visibility of this stone wall so that the wall serves not as a aesthetic treatment, but as a structural retainage for this area up here. Yeah. Um, okay, Steve. okay. Go ahead. Um, Steve, Steve, if I may. If yeah, you go. Where, where you had that you red rectangle. Down. Oh, sorry. I, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, can I just get clarification from Bill on that? Because I was looking at the images and I'm looking at the drawings. Holly, would you, Bill, I'm sorry, just one second. 
Yep. Uh, Ali, would you go to the elevations, please? And the um, elevation labeled north. And if you could zoom in on the north elevation. Uh, upper left. Uh, that looks to me as like we have a stone wall on either side of the gate. And then there's a grass slope going back up to the building. And we'd see if that area isn't covered, if this area and this area, to the extent you can't see it from the house. Oops, let me clear that. Uh, Holly, can you go a little to the left? Thank you. So what I'm proposing that we be aware of is that that area and then to the extent as I go to the right, the house does not obstruct this wall. These areas I think would at minimum be visually blocked by plant material. Yes. That, How tall is that wall? Six feet. Yeah, um, Steve? Yes, please. Yes, to answer your question, the where you had that rectangle on the on the site plan yeah. is where it says existing shed grass slope. And so that's actually grass slope and the stone wall is just demarking where the gate ends. And so that's where we were going to plant the, the cedar trees is at the end of that slope. And over on the right where you have that other big rectangle. Okay. And, and again, through you, Madam Chair, just to be clear, because I think this is a lot of stone, I want to make sure I understand correctly. The end result will be that of the planting is that at minimum, the area in red showing to the left where it says existing shed and grass slope in the stone wall and the area to the right, those you from the street, you will not see those stone. No. Okay. I mean, you're no. right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> if if the trees to be clear. are if <laughs> thank, thank you trees are planted, is that not right, Bill? Yes. You have to have cedar trees planted there in order not to see that part. I don't know. It's yeah. If I'm sorry, if you go back to those photographs of the the temporary trees, there's two on the left and two on the right, which there'd be there'd be more to the left, which will hide the the uh, the stone at the base of the shed that's already there. And then there's going to yep. be more on the right-hand side going toward the pool, which is going to uh, mitigate this, the, that side of the pool. But I could also, I could also suggest that we, that in front of the shed that's there on, I mean, the, uh, the, the garbage bin that's there on the left. Yeah. If we can, we could, instead of having the opening where it's shown between those two trees, we could bring the trees all the way across in front of that and move that bin and then come around the back side of that and go in. And then you wouldn't even see that there was a hillside there. Yeah. How old are the trees? Good solution. What, what is the thought that they would, how tall will they be in five years from now, let's say? Well, the ones at the top of the slope um, were planted about four years ago, and they're about 15, 16 feet tall now. Okay, well, I was thinking of the little cypresses down in front. Are you going to use something like that to yes. hide the pool? Yes. Okay. Okay, Have we? has everybody asked their question? Abby? Val. I, I, I wanted a little more screening up at the pool area on that corner. If we could go back to the site plan. Where it says, can you? Yeah, so where it says gate. Yeah. So where it says gate, um, and then to the left of that, where it says four feet, that corner 
to the left of the stairs, I'd like to see somehow that corner vegetated. Or maybe the pool is just in the wrong place. Maybe it has to be moved over or so something. But <clears throat> it looks like it's like right in the angle of Duke's Road. So is there any way to screen around where the, on the level of the pool, just to the left of that four. Is there well, any Ab way to? Uh, I'm sorry, Abby, what I was suggesting uh, prior to this, you see where the stairs are coming down from yep. the existing deck on the guest house? Yeah. And and how that herringbone pattern uh, yeah. paving, I would, I would suggest that what we do is plant the, the trees on the upper side of those steps coming down all the way across mm -hmm. and then have the entrance all the way on the, as we're looking at it here on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. And then also have the, the cedar trees where they're indicated. So you're coming in and having to turn around that and then that would absolutely block both the stairs of the, the guest house but, and the stairs going up to the pool. So Bill, what would really clear it up for me is if you came back and you had it all you, you like circled or squared okay. like that where you're going to put it would you be able yes. to, to do that so we could just see it yes absolutely thank you that I, that would be my motion if if i was asked <laughs> well i'll ask you what would you like to do would you make a motion for me Yes, I'd like to see that vegetation on the site plan. What, of, are we of what we've it? just talked about. Are we holding it for slight revisions? Yes. All righty. Uh, thank you. Hold on. Val. I would hold, yeah, fine. <laughs> I think it should be completely different, but go with revisions. <clears throat> it's too late. All right. Uh, Steve. Uh, I'm way too late. I got a hockey game to watch and a 6.30 boat to catch. But um, <laughs> I, I just want to clarify, Abby, your motion includes the reconfiguration of the stair like Bill, Bill was talking about. So Yes, yes. The so reconfiguration of the stairs, the trees and all the screening that he wants to that will make it, uh, you can't see it from Duke's Road. Uh, I'm an eye on that. Alrighty. And uh, uh, Abby, are you in favor of your motion? I am. Okay, and I would be in favor also. So there we got four of the four and thank you very much. Thank you, Billy. You're welcome, thank you. We will. Thanks, okay. Bill. So, you're welcome. Have a good night. See you next time. Okay. All right. And We're going to try and hit a few more before we break here. Uh, so 50 Wee Weeder, do we have Marcatone on board as me, Diane, Val, and Stephen? Oh. Mark? <coughs> Hi. Okay, let's go. Um, you've approved the pool cabana main house uh and the barn structure already on this property i think this was to track i don't know why it came up under new business but um anyway it's uh, it's old cool business you're not on new business you're sorry on new business. you have an established board got it okay okay but so i, I honestly can't remember why we approved other stuff and not the pool does anyone remember it just didn't make it to the track portion of the agenda. So, you know, there was a lot going on and it, it just didn't follow up, I guess. That, that's my, my understanding. All right. Chair, I, th I thought also it, before it was horizontal. It was, we, there was a just suggestion at the, the approval of the buildings that maybe it may, I think Val made the suggestion that maybe it should rotate and be more oriented to the, the long structure of the cabana. Oh, okay, so it, so you did submit. No. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I'm just saying. So you, we are reviewing a revision to what you've submitted before. Yeah, yeah. 
because it now reflects the appropriate site plan and structures that were approved since this was originally filed. Okay, thank you. Um, comments from the board? Mm -hmm. I would motion to approve it. All right, I like that, Val, thank you very much. Okay, uh, Val's motion to approve, Stephen. Uh, thanks, Holly, uh, yes, I'm an aye. Okay, Diane. I'm an aye. You Very good, Val, you're in favor of your motion? Yes, sure. Chairs in favor, motion carries unanimously. There you go. Okay, so that's Mr. that. Next Mr. up. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. What? Yes. I, I just, uh, I just want to, if we may, just get a clarification. I don't yeah. think Mark is going to, but there's no vegetation shown on the wee weeder side of this. Okay. And I'm, am I to take it that that means it's existing and this won't be visible at time of inspection or thereafter? Was that your motion, Val? Yes. Okay, thank you. I amend my motion. Just to be clear, is Mark still on? Okay, Mark, did you hear all that? Mark? Yes. Did you hear all that? Y yes, I did. Okay, so we, we want, there's a condition being placed on this, which is not uncommon for pools where it's not visible at the time of inspection and thereafter. Yes. Okay. So right. Related to the vegetation. So I'm going to, I'm going to go down the board just to make sure that everybody still approves of that motion or the revised motion that is. Um, Stephen. Aye. Val. Aye. Diane. Aye. Thank you. And chairs in favor of motion still carries. Okay. Thanks. Thank you very much. Next up, uh, Brooke at Hummock Pond. 137. Commissioner, do we have Brooke, by the way? I'm here. Can okay, you hear me? Good. Okay. So board on this, Brooke, myself, Diane, Abby, Val, and Stephen. Okay. And what was, what was at issue? Um, well, there was a request for height poles. Uh, there was a concern about the ridge length and... Um, there was also uh, a concern about it being a second dwelling. Um, there were height poles put up uh, over the weekend. Uh, they were put up Saturday morning. Um, I actually went out there this morning and um, after looking at them, I'd like to at least offer to shift that building to the left. Uh, so it's a little bit further away from the driveway. Show us what you mean, would you? Oh, oh, actually, you don't. Holly will show us what you mean. Yep. I can screen share if you need. No. I think Holly's got it. So here we are. Is this something that you already submitted or you're doing at the floor or the table? Say that again. Did you, sub did you submit this as a revision or are you just suggesting this? Um, uh, it's a suggestion. It's not a revision. Okay, so then now that we're looking at the locust plan and the site plan, describe what you want to do. Um, well, I'd, at the very least, I'd like to shift the building in red yeah. uh, to the southern, you know, the southwest property line. It's about a uh, 10 to 12 foot shift. Okay. Um, and that will pull it away from the view corridor. Uh, so that was one thing uh, that... Um, I was thinking that might help uh, the concern, one of the concerns that was made. Um, I also, uh, I know my client wants to put up screening in between uh, this, this house and the back house. And uh, I think that that will offer a, like a visual separation. Um, at, you know, when you're looking down that street or that driveway, you're not going to necessarily see those uh, you know, one building being uh, subservient and a second dwelling to the other. It's, it's really, uh, they're really separate, you know, they're separated by at least a couple hundred feet. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you add some screening in between them and it becomes its, you know, in effect, its own, <laughs> uh, its own situation. All right. Let's see what your board thinks about this. Anybody ready? Or should I yeah. 
Unless yes. Belle, Belle had concerns or she wants to go, other, otherwise I'll go. No, um, I don't need to go right now. Okay. So I do know. need to go, but not for this. Bio break. Yeah. Stephen, go. Um, yeah, so Brooke, I totally get it. And my only concern is shifting to the Southwest all the way to that property line. I, I would like to see it perhaps split the difference because in that area, having, having a structure, you know, on the setback is not typical. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the um, locus, I think you'll see, you know, there's a, there's a structure there and it's probably 20 or 30 feet off further to the south, southwest. Um, and I think that, that in that area, otherwise we're going to get into this situation where we're kind of um, um, Like a crowding. Yeah, and it, I mean, I don't want to, I personally would not think it would be appropriate to be like Mill Hill, and I'm not suggesting that's what you're trying to do. Mm, no. I think we need to be cognizant of letting that slide all the way over to the site back is going to create a different feel for that whole neighborhood eventually. So other than that, I would just say maybe split the difference between where it is now and this and the setback. Okay. And, and those are my only concerns. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Abby. Do we have Abby? My only concern, well, was the height because I, you know, I don't know. I, I drive out there a lot. I don't see houses that are that tall. And it looked to me from the architect that you could take a couple of feet out of the height of that. Okay. All right. Um, so you still have concerns about the height. So yes. oh, that was Abby. Diane. Uh, could I ask Brooke how tall this building is? You sure can. It is 27 feet, 10 and a half. Basically, it's 28 feet. 28 feet. Yeah. And it's the second building on the lot? Yeah. Is this it the is. one that the old building is small? So this. The old building is 26 old. feet. Well, we're so, some building has to be 25 feet, not 27, almost 28. Yeah. As a secondary building, one of them has got to step up and step down. Well, because this will certainly be larger than the back one. Well, then do what you can dropping the back one. I, you know that's the rule when you when you start, and it's uh, this is the area. Although I don't have the site plan, is sort of at the corner of Millbrook and Hamid Pond, right? It's it's up uh, it's up a couple parcels from Millbrook. Yeah, it's right across but the street from the uh, Kimmerick uh, Farm. And right next to, um, I think it's Double D Farm. Oh yeah. Yeah, mm. but it it doesn't really. Those buildings out there are big barns. Certainly, that's true. Big barns, but most of them are not big houses. I can't think of one until you get way in to Millbrook. Uh, houses along Hummock Pond Road in that area. Some of them, you can't even see. The, the building across uh, the street is a two-story building with two-story eaves. Okay. At 28 feet? I don't know the exact height. Uh, I don't mind knocking this down. Uh, I can probably bring it down like, you know, a foot, maybe 16 inches, you know, just by well, changing I, the roof pitch. Okay. Yeah, I would like to see that and you could move it over. But you got to, I, I don't know what planting you have uh, planned for here at the edge of the clear, clearing. And then you have the next one. And then you have an area for 46 times whatever event tent. Uh, no, that's, that's, a, that's, uh, 
that's a graphic hey, that shouldn't be about, there. Why are we talking about an event tent? Yeah, I, I don't know. We're, we're just talking about the red building. Okay, well, I'd like to see the red building come down, okay? Thank you. Uh, okay, so Stephen? I, I oh, no, you already spoke. Uh, so you, you're not allowed to speak anymore. Um, Abby's spoken. She wants the building to come down. Val? How far is it from the road? Uh, it's 200 and uh, I think it's 208 feet. And that picture that you provided of the driveway looking down at the house that's there, where did you take that from? Uh, that is right where the, um, that's probably about 10 feet from the edge of the road. And my truck is uh, about 100 feet. And then beyond, like, there's a tree right right in front of my uh, truck and the pole, you know, the, the building will be beyond that tree and breaking to the left. So where the truck is, it's further in from that? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's further in from the truck by about another okay. hundred feet or so. Okay. Yeah. And I can push this building back, you, you know, further and over further. I've got a little bit of room. Okay. So it sounds like you want to do this, Brooke knock some height out of the building and move it over, as Stephen says, not all the way to the property line, but like halfway over, okay? That sounds good. You gonna try for that? I okay. will try can for you, that. Can somebody give me a, a motion for some revisions? That was my motion, Mr. Chair. Oh, no, Stephen got it. Okay, so the motion is to hold for revisions. Um, Diane. Aye. Thank you, Abby. Val? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Abby? Aye. Thank you. Chairs in favor, motion carries. Okay, let's try Sun Wind. And we're really winding down. Oh, Thank right. you. After nine o'clock, bye. Um, okay, Arrowhead. Let's see if we can knock this one off. Do we have somebody to represent this? I see Timothy Holmes. I believe that's our man. Good evening. Hello. Hey, this has got to be it. So, uh, hi, Tim. Um, this is going to be it for the night, kids. Thank you. All right. Okay. So, yeah, this was all about black shingles. Uh, I just have to say, it didn't look like those shingles were black. I drove by today and, you know, they look dark gray. They just look like dark gray shingles. It didn't look like they were painted black. Are you referring to the ones on the upper building or the lower building, Ray? Lower building. Okay. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. I haven't been there since we installed it, so I haven't take that, taken that close of a look at it. No, I, I mean, if anyone else has viewed this, it, it looks like, you know, the shingles on the little low building are the same color as the ones on the big building. Yeah, they're a dark, they're a gray, they're dark, but they're definitely, I think, I think they're a little, Mr. Chairman, I think they're a little darker, but they're definitely not black. I mean, okay, so I just wanted to point that out. But, but then I also, the other side of me says, this isn't Tomahawk, but it's kind of like the entrance to Tomahawk, where we're getting into sort of an industrial area. Not that I want to belittle the architecture or anything there, but it is a little less, uh, you know, precious than than some other places I could think of on Nantucket. Okay, so ordinarily I don't speak first, so I, I would like to hear from my board on this. And the board in this case is Diane, Abby, Val, and Stephen. Same board as the previous application. Okay. Uh, you ready, Diane? Uh, yeah, I think I think I remember that discussing this isn't. The suggestion come up that the shingles be painted black. Is That's, this the house that we it, were going to paint shingles black? Yeah, well, they were supposed to have been painted black on the little, if you're looking at this photograph that's on the screen right now, there's a little one story building yep. behind that truck that's right in the foreground. Right. So, right. But, but I just happened to be out there today and I looked across, I was actually on Tomahawk, you know, and I, I, this, you kind of run into this when you pull out a Tomahawk. 
by the way, it's not a residence. It's it's a commercial building. And so what about office, oh, go ahead, Diane. Sorry. No, I just that's great. And what about the did you see that building that the red line ends up on that strip that is not uh, that is not black? Well, that's I think that's the, the building that's this application is about. Yeah, that's what we're looking to address. Right. Well, I think it should be painted black. Uh, okay. Thank you, Diane. Um, Abby? Uh, it, uh, I'm confused about this. It can be painted, painted black? Or was it painted black? Has not yet been and can be with your approval. Um, uh, geez, well, I, I've never seen that done. So I'm, I, I want to hear what other people say. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks, Abby. Val. I apologize. I didn't go to view it in person. Um, so I'm just looking at the photos. Uh, it would be great if something could be done to mitigate that corner. Hey, uh, Tim. Yes, sir. You got to remind me of something here. It, are the panels already up or are they? Uh, yes, they are. Yeah, they are. Okay. All right. Look at the next picture. Number three, which was from exhibit A. And this is a rendering prior to them being installed. Oh, okay. Yep. So if we look at this picture, the panels go all the way to the uh, rake boards, right to left. They cover it 100% right to left. Mm -hmm. It's the bottom row. And looking at this picture, probably shows about eight courses of shingles showing. I think we have slightly less than that in the actual photo, which is the one from up above. All right. It's probably about 18 inches that shows, whereas this one shows a little over two feet, maybe. Oh. Okay, thank you. And I think it wasn't that the point of exhibit A was to justify the panels to the northeast corner. Yeah, yeah we were supposed to hold them down. Yeah, which it's we could have should have done after holding them up to the peak for 11 years. It's a little tough to hold them down. Um, mm. And so we made a mistake. So we're looking to try to rectify that. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else, Val? No. Steven? Yeah, I, Tim, I'm not looking to take a pound of flesh, but we, you know, we got to kind of draw a line somewhere with this stuff. And the whole discussion was to justify these to the north and the east. So um, I'm fine with some type of relatively cheap solution that's black paint, but I do think something needs to be done. So I would like to propose if we can uh, make them black and then if it requires, uh, I guess, another inspection um, and if it isn't acceptable, then we can go to plan B if we have to replace six or eight rows of shingles, we could do that, or we could look at shifting the array down to, uh, to, the, to the east to bring it down to the bottom. Let's start so, with the easiest solution. Yeah. I, I guess I don't need to tell you that, Tim. Go ahead, Diane. I would make a motion to paint the exposed shingles black. All right, I like that motion, Diane, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna pull my board now, ready? Um, Abby. Aye. Thank you, Val. Aye. Thank you, Stephen. Ludwig roofing paint. Aye. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> Diane, uh, are you in favor of your motion? Yes, aye. Okay, and chairs in favor. Uh, that motion carries. Okay. Tim, I think that does colors. Thank you. Give it a look. Huh. Interesting. You were being serious, right, Stephen? Yeah, Ludwig. I, I haven't researched it. I was just doing
doing some quick. Huh. Very interesting. Okay. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful night. Yeah. Night, night. Okay, so it uh, looks like we're going to be holding items 15 through 28 of old business. And Kadeem, if you're still there. I'm here. I think that something prevented us from having a, a meeting later in the week. Uh, yes, we cannot have a meeting on Thursday. Uh, so our next, yeah, yeah, no, no meeting on Thursday. Well, well, let's just put it this way. No meeting Thursday or Friday. So does this, have, does this have to go to the beginning of next Tuesday's agenda? I, I totally lied to you. We absolutely can have a meeting on Thursday. We can have a meeting on Thursday. We can. If you guys are available, we can have a meeting. The agenda has been posted. What time would that meeting be? Say that again? What time would it be? It would be 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. Okay, so it would be I great. would agree to do that, but not for more than an hour. Yeah, I can't do more than an hour. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I, well, listen, hey, guys, you know, I'm in the same camp where we just spent from 4.30 to practically 9.30 um, uh, on a Tuesday night. So I'm, yeah. But I do believe that if we could, if we could at least a quorum of us rally, uh, and be able to get some of this stuff off. It's just going to lighten our load a little bit for next Tuesday. So you can look right. at that way too. So, I will be there. I can be there. Okay, that's great, Diane. It sounds like we have Diane. Uh, I got to check my schedule. <clears throat> Hopefully I can get on for an hour. And we will limit it to an hour. Um, it sounded like Val, you would be good for an hour. Steven, you might be good for an hour. Yes. That's all true. Okay, so that's sort of kind of a quorum right there. Why don't we... We, we have 14 applicants. Yeah. So, put it six listen, minutes. There's, there's no that's way... We're gonna, four minutes. No, oh, God. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I didn't hear that, Diane. <laughs> I said that gives us four minutes for application. Well, I think that should be a new rule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a new rule. Um... Listen, we'll get through what we can get through, and then at least we have less that we have to process on a Tuesday night, okay? Yeah. So, Kadeem, I guess the, the meeting is already posted, and we'll just move this stuff over to Thursday at yep. 1 p.m., okay? Sounds good. I will amend the agenda and get it sent to you, and I will be there on Thursday as well. That's great. And anybody, uh, all of you members that are listening, if you could just let Kadeem and or Kathy know whether or not you plan on being present. So, because I think with some of this stuff, we might run into quorum issues because uh, it's old business. So it would be nice to know oh. to be there and not be there. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, listen, um, Let's, should we all go to bed now? Yeah. <laughs> okay, can somebody motion to go to bed now? Motion to go to bed. Wait. I think uh, um, Diane made a motion to adjourn. Okay, so on the motion, Val. Aye. Thank you. Abby, if you're still there. Aye. Great, Stephen. Aye, good night, y'all. Thank you. And um, Diane? Aye. Chairman's in favor. Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Good Thanks. night. Night, night. Thank you, Kadeem. Thank you, Holly. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Good night.